Good evening. Welcome to the Select Board Board of Health meeting for Wednesday, May 2nd, 2018, 6 p.m. here in South Deerfield um, Town Hall. First item on, oh, but, uh, by the way, we are being taped, just in case you were curious. Um, the first thing we're going to start out with is the Pledge of Allegiance. Right. If everyone would please stand. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. That was good. That was good. Um, select board comments or announcements. I just want to thank everybody that was involved in our staff, um, the wonderful Frontier Facilities people, Matt, who was just outstanding with the um, speakers, you know, our microphones. Um, I just want to thank everyone for having a really successful town meeting. So thank you very much. Do you have any comments? I do not. Okay. Board of Health comments? I just want to say, oh, honestly, we have ticks are out. Everybody's enjoying this lovely weather. Please be careful and do tick checks. Um, town administrator's report. Not ready. Okay. So uh, let's see. What have we got? Um, I just got an email later today from uh, council, uh, forwarding an email from the church's council saying that they are wrapping things up with the, this is the church uh, here in South oh, Deer for the Congregational Wendy, that's Church. wonderful. They're wrapping those th things up and there will be, um, have some more documents for the town to sign, ascents. They're called ascents. And um, when I get them, we'll bring them forward to you. Do we, so do we have an actual timeline? Uh, they just said they're, exp all I saw in the email, which uh, was sent today to her, um, they have some further changes to our petition, but we hope to have all of their issues resolved in the next few days. Once we have finalized the petition with the AG's office, we will send you a copy of, of the petition with all attachments and assent for the town to sign and assented to motion for judgment for the town to sign. So I don't know if that means assented to motion for judgment, meaning there'll be, it still needs to go through superior court or probate court or, uh, oh. but at any rate. Well, at least That's it seems like the church. there is some action, which is wonderful. So thank you, Wendy. Okay. And the other thing is also today I received um, a letter from Dumont um, that they're intending to apply to um, Mass Economic Development Program for um, credits or what are they called, um, EDIP, uh, which is an incentive, a tax incentive program. And... Um, I did, they did not specifically say in this letter, but I anticipate that they may come to us for um, an incentive as well. Um, so would that mean that um, we need to have, uh, we, have, we haven't had a TIP committee for a while. Do we have to appoint a TIP committee? I'm not aware that you need to mm -hmm. have one. Um, we can just deal with it with the assessors? Um, well, in the past, like when we did Richardson's Candy Kitchen, there was like an actual little committee. Um, there was a, we voted a selectman's representative, which I was the one that did that. Was it just Ju for one project, or did you do more? Did you handle more than that? Well, it was appointment for the Richardson's Candy Kitchen um, tip. All right, well, I can, tip, I'll look I mean. into that. Yeah, I, I don't know if we have to formally do that or John can just talk to them, John Cordero can just talk to them and then we, I, I felt like, and the one other tiff that I did, we, we, I wasn't the person, I think it was David okay. Wolfram. let me look so into I think that. So I think it was, I, th I thought there was like a committee we had to do that represents and then they actually vote and then we vote formally t as a TIF committee. Tif yeah. yeah, TIF committee. Tax increment financing. Yeah. Um, we vote formally and the assessors vote formally on the recommendation. Okay. Let me, I have not been involved with those, so I will look into that. Okay. Well, that's let wonderful. That means know. there's movement on that. Um, I think the two other things I had for right now, besides all the things on the agenda, uh, was um, in the agenda, which is talking about town meeting after mm -hmm. an after action report and um, this draft protocol that I have for you about um, 
dealing with the marijuana facilities. But we can deal with that. We can uh, do that at the end of the meeting. I have that on the end of the me okay. on the agenda for the end of the meeting. All right. And that you know, just to say that is meant for we're being, you know, the uh, inspector's office and I and probably you have been called and approached. We need to have a consistent, fair process of how we talk yeah. to people and. This lays out a protocol for that, and I have sent it to council. Okay. So I guess we've just talked about that. <laughs> but we can review it more later, if you'd like. Okay. Okay. Um, Did you have anything else? Uh, I can leave it at that for now. All right. Um, I see people in the audience. Um, so why don't we do go public, down. Public comment. Comment. Why don't we go down to public comment so you don't have to wait through all the, our meeting. So would you like to come up and talk at the table here and introduce yourselves anybody that's interested I'm just going to be I'm just your back okay thank you thank you ladies if you don't mind um, for our TV audience you could introduce yourselves and then explain why you're here and what you would like us to do um, I'm Elissa Clement I live on Evans Lane. I'm Amy Gazen Schwartz, and I also live on Evans Lane. And I'm Cheryl Bucala, and I also live on Evans Lane. And Cheryl and I are trustees of the Mill Village East Condominium Association. And I and spoke to you on Saturday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, you know what? Why don't you pull the mic just a little bit closer, okay. just just so that people. Well, in a moment, I'm going to hand you something. That's why I'm oh, sort okay. of hesitant to. Um, okay. So I've written up, uh, I'm here to share a statement about the clear cutting that occurred along Route 5 at Mill Village Road over the weekend. Given the short notice, not everyone who wanted to come tonight was able. One of my neighbors gave me this letter to give to you. Is this what you're reading now? No, oh, okay. this is just a letter from, All right. from my neighbor as well. Okay. When I saw trees being cut down on state property Saturday morning, I was concerned about whether this was permitted work. I called Carolyn Ness at 931. She called the 24-hour MassDOT helpline, help desk. She called me back to let me know they said a permit had been issued. In addition, she let me know I could find out the scope of the work of the permit at MassDOT during the week. However, yesterday I went to the MassDOT office only to be told they had not issued a permit for this tree clearing and that the only permit they issued was in 2014 for the driveway only. In addition, it was explained that they would not have authorized this drastic clear cutting of every tree. Instead, they would have taken a more thoughtful and selective approach. I was told they were aware of the problem and already working on it, but it had not been determined yet if the consequence will be in the form of fines only or will include replanting. Those of you who have seen the now empty landscape previously filled with beautiful old trees know how drastic it is. I'm very concerned about the destruction of state trees as well as the effect on our neighborhood and our community. Therefore, I'm here to ask you to work with MassDOT and advocate for our community to make sure replanting and the replacement of the destroyed trees is part of the solution. Thank you for your serious consideration of this matter. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I know it's, I'm, I'm just sorry this um, is very distressing for you all. And um, I just want to correct one thing on the help desk. It's the operations, 24-hour operations desk in Boston, Thank DOT. You. So I and it I is, it is sure. recorded. So it is also recorded that he told me that there was a permit. He had mm -hmm. checked with the um, crew that is on duty here and that there was a permit pulled. So we do have some recourse in the fact that, you know, we didn't inter intervene because there was supposed to be a, a legitimate permit and then it turned out there was not. So um, what we can do is try to follow up with a letter to DOT, our concerns. I, I know that doesn't help because the trees have been cut down, but, um, 
one thing that uh, just happened today, um, I did get an email on our tree inventory program. We had a small grant to do a tree inventory here and um, uh, analyze our tree canopy in town. And basically, I come back and said that um, we needed to plant more oak trees that were more climate resistant and because uh, we had too many maple trees and that we had the opportunity to plant 10 more trees uh, or we could participate in a grant proposal. Part of this is 10 more trees planted. So um, I would suggest that we would work with your um, condo association and see if we could get some of those trees planted in your neighborhood to replace those trees somewhere along your um, property line so that you would have, um, you know, maybe some opportunity for tree canopy. Um, that would be one of my suggestions. I don't know well, if... I, the only thing that I can add to this is I have not read the letter, but I know our building uh, inspector is in possession of a letter from the state regarding the cutting of the trees. I did not read it, so I do not know exactly what it says. Uh, but, you know, we certainly can work with uh, the Department of Transportation to see, you know, what can be replanted on state property. But I would encourage you to come to the planning board meetings that might pertain to whatever goes on there because, you know, tree planting and uh, things of that screenings are part of our site plan review, so, yeah. I, I, just, I just want to check. We're sure that it's the state property that the trees were cut on and not the right. private property. Yes. My, my so it understanding wasn't a town it was, permit that was my understanding it is um, mass dot right away. And to help, you can go on to the assessor's um, yeah. map online, no, and that. you can see the property lines. You can yeah. zoom right in, and you can see that. And you, if you walk over it. there, you've already done it. <laughs> yeah. And you can see the, the granite bound stones that are oh, there, yeah. so it give you a good idea. Yeah, um, there's about 150 <clears throat> feet there, that strip. That's yeah. 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 I mean, it's actually quite wide. Yeah. yeah. So um, do you have any other? Well, I just had a question um, about whether the planning board meeting has been scheduled. There is a planning board meeting scheduled for t next Tuesday. And this is um, on the agenda. And there is no, on the agenda so far, there is an informal conversation about that site, but there's nothing been submitted to the planning board at this time dealing with whatever well, is going on. we have received it in the oh, office. Yeah, we okay. had um, from Dollar General stores. Okay. So and there's a site plan on file for that? Site? It's, not, it's not fully anything yet. It's just a, they submitted permit applications, and oh. that's what I said. I didn't see it. I was in yeah. here last Friday, and mm -hmm. I did not see that. Yeah, so. per so I, had those, yeah. Um, I would suggest that you get as many people to come to that meeting so that you can have some uh, lay the groundwork for some input. Sure. And then... Um, We'll try to follow up with our, our, the little grant we had with the FERCOG. And I mean, that's some trees. I mean, they're, they're obviously saplings. They're not going to yeah. be mature trees. But um, and maybe we can figure that out and put well, some trees yeah. there. Because we, we have the ability to plant them somewhere in town as part of the grant. And my understanding is, as uh, Mr. Camosa said, is that if, if there is a site, if it requires a site plan review, they're, they're required, whoever builds there, to install a buffer, a vegetation buffer. That could be. Between well, our property and their property. Well, it would but. make, you know, what you want to be concerned about is, um, you know, when, when cars drive in at night. Oh, yeah. You yeah. have adequate screening so right, the right. lights aren't shining in your property. And, I mean, there's all kinds of things and, that you and could also, do. And also, I would be concerned with the Board of, to ask the Board of Health about uh, wastewater disposal and how that, if they have a septic system, how that might impact our septic systems. Yeah, there is, uh, I do know that the perk test was done on the property and they did other well testing to see groundwater elevation, soil samples, yeah, and that yeah, sort of sure Once again, I don't know if anything has been filed at this point, but. Would that come before you as the Board of Health? No. No, that's part of the site plan. Well, well drainage is part of site it's plan. It's all site plan review, but the septic system would fall solely on Dick. Dick it's would the do board that. of health, but he's our agent. So. He would right. do, he would review the design. And yeah. okay, I thought yeah. the board would approve yeah. it. No, no, he no. Does Dick, it without, Dick okay. no, goes he out and does the um, you know yeah, so all the just, I think they take what I heard you say it's an informal discussion, so it's not a public hearing. Right. It's yeah. early stage, yeah. so really it's a listening opportunity more than. A, yeah. So it would so we'll be just ahead. important to say that you're concerned and and 
you would be looking for screening and you know where the access is going to be, traffic flow issues, that kind of thing. Um, you know, when people go to the dump or not the dump transfer station on the weekend, you know, there's quite a lot of traffic there, and so yeah. how how would their Maybe flow into yeah. the site affect your neighborhood and and traffic going to the transfer station? And so just just all you want to do is make a list of concerns that will be on public record and and that you would like addressed for um, that process when when it occurs. Yeah. But um, according to KIPP, there isn't anything formally done. So, But doing be, doing that list of concerns before the formal plan was yes, submitted would be that would be really important. Really effective. Yeah. Um, the permit. Yeah. I was going to add is that it's important for any neighbors to be involved with the process. That you should attend all of the planning board meetings because you know it, it is a multi-layered process. Okay. And that if you come to the second one and the fourth one, and then the, you know, you might miss a lot of important things that have already been decided. And I've seen people who don't participate in the whole process and they get quite discouraged because they say, well, what about this? And, you know, we don't, you know, we'll be as courteous as we can, but we don't want the meetings to drag on for hours and hours to rehash things that we've already decided, you know, the time before. Mm -hmm. But there'll also be a, a definite public. Uh, notice sent to everyone for the public hearing. As in a butter. As right. in a butter yeah. or in a butter to in a butter. So, yeah. The permit that um, Dollar General got for cutting the trees, did you ever see that permit? Or you know no, I, I called the, um, it's, it's called the, the Mass Department of Transportation Operational Desk. It's a 24-7. And when we have problems, I mean, I, I have the number yeah. because the reason I like to call them is because it's recorded and they log it in. So there's always proof of my complaints. Right. So um, I, when Elizabeth called me, I just called right up okay. and um, identified myself and, and logged in the complaint. And the person that was on duty called whoever the crew that was on duty out here. And he was told that um, there was a permit and it, my understanding, it was a driveway permit, not a not to cut trees, not a cut right. tree permit. But somehow, in the discussion, I, I mean, this is just speculation from my my, mm -hmm. my conversation with Elizabeth was that I'm sure when they reported the complaint to this to whoever was on duty, and it went to the desk, and then they called me, and I called Elizabeth. They said there was a permit, and it you know nobody defined it as a tree cutting permit or driveway permit or whatever just, just as there was a permit but the conversation was was recorded that they told us that or told me that it was a permit so there was a permit pulled so the fault and that's why I'm sure they're doing an investigation the fault is in the you know within DOT itself because I had told Elizabeth that if there was no permit I was going to you know have the police come and hold them up until we sorted it out. But mm. he really did call back in like five minutes, wasn't it? Because I called you right back. It, yeah, it was all very quick. Yeah, I mean, it was startlingly quick. You know, usually it's a few minutes, and it really was within five minutes, I would say, because I called Elizabeth right back. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, so I, I just, I didn't track down any police to go and say, Wait, you got to wait until we verify mm -hmm. that you have a permit because they said that there was a permit. So, um, I'm so I'm did, sorry does, the trees were cut, but does that inv investigation include the town at all? Do you think, or is it just the DOT, uh, or is there place people? I, I don't I don't things? actually know. There's no conversation. We can as a town we can Wendy can follow up and find out what is actually happening in the investigation. They just told you they were going to have an investigation, right, Elizabeth? Um, yeah, and I wanted to clarify a couple of things. One is that, um, from based on one of my conversations with the town, but as well as MassDOT, um, it, is, it isn't Dollar General who did the clearing. They, don't, they haven't no, bought the land yet. Right. It's the current oh, owner. No. Right. So the land hasn't, hasn't been sold. Right. Or we don't know. So it, it's the current what I've been told is that it was the current owner. And in fact, I know somebody who actually saw him out there while this was going on. So, 
Um, so I just wanted to be fair to Dollar General <laughs> okay. and just say that my uh, what I've been told is that it, it would, didn't have anything to do with them. Um, I also wanted to say that, that Carolyn was really nice and helpful Saturday morning, and I don't fault the town. I understand what happened with that. And um, that um, my concern was, or my hope was, that the town would, I, I, sort, I see this as a separate issue than the planning of the Dollar General because this was the current owner and this is a mass dot issue and, and along Route 5 there. And my hope is that the town could advocate for us in, in uh, determining, when mass dot determines what will happen, that instead of just collecting fines, that they will actually um, the, you know, see that trees are replanted there. Yes. Because well, it, so it's I, not just us that's affected by that. Every, oh, I mean, yes. everybody I've heard who's oh, gone sure. by there said, oh my God, what happened to the trees? Yeah. I mean, just it's today just I was hearing from other people, other friends who live all over Deerfield. I just freaked out. I know. I do know that, I don't know the conversation you had, but Sounds I do like know that a uh, little more than a, a year or so ago, the current landowner did get a permit in what's called a curb cut, had allowed to, to uh, put a driveway in, in, and there. he dug it out. The state gave him permission to put a pipe under the driveway and put TRG to his property. Um, but as far as the tree permit, I haven't seen it, but all I did, there were some people who called the building inspector's office on Friday, and I was there, and he did have some documentation from them, but I don't know exactly what it said. But we can mm -hmm. definitely look into it. Well, a mass Thanks. dot, yeah. Like when I read that sentence about mass dot, they, um, to be told they had not issued a permit for this tree clearing and that the only permit they issued was in 2014 for the driveway only. So they did discuss yeah. that with me. We'll have an update at the next meeting, which is not yet decided when that will be. Okay. <laughs> Whether it's next week or two weeks. Definitely two weeks, maybe next week as well. Um, what it, you could do is just check in with Wendy Okay. to see what's going on and we can follow up on this little grant and see if there's any possibility that um, we can work with your condo association okay. for a few of the trees you know if there's any um, adequate space to put these trees and oh we have a Thank lot you. of space <laughs> okay <laughs> well it's um they're supposed to be if lovely you trees give me a copy of your letter and write your email addresses down then i can that'd be easier this letter okay here? yep or the statement okay. i'd like sure. a copy of yeah. that so yeah. and then just write your email and i can one. get back to you that would be great. Okay. Yes. Thank well, you. thank you, thank ladies, you. for thank coming you in. Thank you for listening to us. Yeah, thank no you. No problem. It was, and it was lovely to meet you. Thanks for taking us early as well. Mm. Appreciate that. Yes. No, that's okay. Um, we're hoping to get out that's relatively nice. early tonight. It's such a beautiful night. Do you want to go down and do Zach's? Well, yeah. maybe there are other people here oh. for public comment. Um, is there any other, anybody else here for public comment? I said maybe. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Um, yes, let's go down and do um, Zach's um, um, salary request. Okay. Want to just move right into it? Yeah. All right. Thank you. I move to vote to affirm the recommendation of the South County EMS Oversight Board to increase the salary of South County EMS Director Zachary Smith to a grade six, step nine for the fiscal year. 18 classification and compensation of $37.55 an hour effective April 29th, 2018 through the remainder of the fiscal year, June 30th, 2018. I second that. Is there any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. I make a motion to vote to affirm the recommendation of the South County EMS Oversight Board of Rec to recommend the South County EMS Director Zachary Smith move to a step 10, grade 6, at $39.78, effective July 1, 2018. I second that. Is there any further discussion? No. I guess I would just like to um, just mention that this is what we had budgeted in our EMS um, budget. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, I move to vote to affirm the recommendation of the South County EMS Oversight Board to use $50,000 in South County EMS Operation Reserve to prepare the new um, SCEMS building for operations readiness. Second, Operation. I guess I would just like to mention that um, we have a reserve of $100,000, and since uh, 
that we keep on hand in case there's any unforeseen um, issues or we don't collect, you know, we don't have receipts for that month or, or a month or so or whatever. Um, or our mix of insurances, um, much more Medi Medicaid, Medicare heavy versus private insurance. Um, and since we only have about seven weeks left in the fiscal year, we feel comfortable, or the Board of Oversight feels comfortable using $50,000 um, of the operational reserves to outfit the new building. Did you have anything to wanted to add? No, just to that you were trying that. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> this money is going to be used for things like desks, uh, you know, some computers, uh, alarm systems, and. Um, lockers and other things just to get the building up and functional with the people occupying it. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Stand. Thank you. Sure. Um, Wendy, can you just make sure that Zach has all the these minutes for our yeah, records? Well, the I boom minutes. Send it to um, the treasurer. Yep. Um do, you, do how how uh, how long was the after action report going to take? Oh, I just wanted to. I, I sort of said it in and um, um, that I'd like to do this because I we often don't think to right after something happens, you know, to say okay, what we could, how could we have done this better? What what could be smoother? That kind of thing. And I thought, you know, I said it offhandedly, and then Diana put it down. I said, you know what, leave it. And maybe we'll cover some of those things. But um, why don't we wait and do other matters first? And uh, if we have time at the end, I just have some notes about that, and we can talk about it then because it's um, six thirty now. Oh, is it? You think it's six thirty? I thought it was three, three or four more minutes. All right, you're giving me three minutes. <laughs> well, um, I don't know if there's anything on on your mind about it, but I took notes on things that were said and. Um, I believe this is what um, Mr. Gilmore was talking about last night, was um, follow up on you know some of these items that come up at the very end of the meeting, um, at, such as I think one of the things was um, the voting issue that Mr. Abrahams brought up, which really would be a petition kind of article. And I know they voted on that in um, priority voting, instant yes. runoff voting. It was voted on uh, by petition in, in Sunderland. Um, but also, what were the other things? Um, I know we had that truck. I mean, that truck in the dump at the transfer station keeps seemingly coming up. But I felt like Kevin answered that question pretty right. well, that he does use that truck. Well, I'm talking about at the end when people come up yeah. and, and, and well, uh, ask yeah, for things. The and the follow-up, yeah. for instance, the town study report that um, uh, Skip Olmsted put on the warrant a couple of years ago, and that didn't move forward, but in, because it was a petition, I would imagine, unless the board chose to move something forward, it would be up to the person who put that or brought that issue up. Is the report on our web page? No, he, that was something new he was talking about. Okay. Um, yes, and the old report, the DOR report, which perhaps he was talking about taking that and moving with that, I don't know. Um, that is, in fact, on our, our okay. uh, web page. Um, and oh, what was the other one? I was just going to say it. Um, well, you did change the, the name Selectman to Select yes, Board after did. someone got up at the end of the meeting, who I, that was before I was here. Um, but I understand we probably should do that more formally, so we'll, we'll have a, an item on a future uh, meeting. Uh, Barbara brought that to my attention. Town Clerk brought that to my attention. So also, I think I've mentioned this to you, we, we're doing these... Um, the closings on the properties at the old Oxford uh, property. And in order to use the proceeds to pay down the loan, we have to, within 90 days, go to town meeting. So we probably have to, we will have to have it, in order to accomplish that, have a town meeting sometime to make it work for the first closing, which happened a couple weeks ago, by uh, end of June, mid-July. And hopefully the other one will happen during that time. So. There were other things that have been coming to my attention that might also go on that warrant, which would be a, um, a general bylaw around marijuana. Now that you've passed the zoning bylaw, mm -hmm. a general one. And council will provide something, and I will bring that to, to you for 
The other thing that was brought to my attention as well, to talk about house cleaning like that, was in 2014 there was a, a warrant article uh, not to charge a certain excise tax or an excise tax on certain farm animals and equipment, and it was never acted on. So, and it did pass. But we could look into I'm, that. I'm surprised that it, I mean, I'm sorry that it didn't ever got a follow up. Yeah. That was shocking, actually. I thought it was followed up. Okay. How do we how do we make sure that those kind of things get followed well, up? Well, I'm turn to you for it's up to the board. These are advisory things that people bring, so it's your decision which you wished what you wish to do with it. So I you know I that was actually a town meeting warrant article. It was well. Let me ask. Well, you I I remember one was that that was a warrant article that had to we talked about this the other day mm -hmm. that had to do with uh, and it got remedied the way that they were taxing farm that, property. The farm property. But I, we I don't know if that was actually one. Well, it's funny. I, I was not a selectman, but I kept right. pushing them, and it, it, it did get done. But I'd like okay. you to find out <clears throat> from mm -hmm. uh, council if there's a statute of limitations, if there, if you will, on that type of a vote. So it has, it is uh, three or four years. Can we still act on it without bringing it back? And I would like to, if you can tell me which town meeting it was. I'll it was uh, in 2014, and it was Article 30. Okay. I just, I, I have to say, I just assumed that if we voted on it positively at town meeting, that yeah. it would have gotten followed through, so. I don't know. Okay, I'll look that up. Okay. Um, so, yes, we'll have to have a special town meeting, and then we'll have an Hopefully okay. another one in the fall. Um, and I, I am kind of I'm concerned about our personnel board. I, we're going down in number. We need to have a, to have a functioning board, have more people. Um, Do we have, did we get formal resignations again? We, uh, no, just verbal. And then uh, we need more than four people, I think. We only will left, be left with three. And we need, I think, more um, than that. There, so. there was, we had a couple of volunteers. Um, so I guess... If people are still interested for the personnel committee, then um, it would be really, really nice if can they I, step Can forward. I add an experience? We really do need people who have some background in personnel and human resources. That would be greatly helpful. Yes. <laughs> um, so that's wonderful. Um, okay. Um, seeing that it is now 6.30, we have um, a public hearing. Um, notice is hereby given in accordance with provisions of Mass General Laws Chapter 138 that the Deerfield Select Board, acting as a local licensing authority, has received an application for a new annual wine and malt beverages off-premises liquor license and the appointment of a manager from Cheslick's Market, LLC, located at 55C North Main Street, South Deerfield. The total indoor area is 2,231 square feet. The proposed occupancy is less than 99 people. In accordance with the aforementioned provisions, the licensing authority of the said town of Deerfield will hold a public hearing in the main meeting room of the municipal office building at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass., on Wednesday, May 2, 2018, at 6.30 p.m. Okay. And I made a terrible mistake with this application. I'm ashamed to say I did not send notices to the abutters by certified mail. I, I thought I had done it when I first filed the application. It wasn't initially received by the town, and then the hearing date was set later, and it must have thrown my, my system off whack. But I, I was required to send certified mail notices to the abutters, of the, of the, and I didn't do it. So I would ask the select board to consider um, rehearing this, giving giving a, a new hearing notice and giving me an opportunity to serve the notices on the abutters as required by the statute. Um, how uh, how long um, do can we do it in two weeks, Wendy? Is uh, or do we have to wait longer? The, do you know the, the notice? How long? It, you, the notice period is ten days. So if if you were to, I don't know when the next meeting that they you meet would, on Wednesdays. And it would be in two weeks. If I could get a hearing notice together really quickly, we could. I could get the mail. Why don't out. you call tomorrow and let us know? Yeah. 
I mean, I can do. I can meet that deadline. That's that's not a problem. Okay. Well, what um, we can do is um, we we can postpone the hearing rather you. than. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, we actually would be continuing the hearing. Continuing the hearing for. Do you want it, since we, we opened for it for purposes of, of giving no notice? I guess. Why don't yeah. we just set up a new hearing since okay. we're going to be putting it in the paper for the first time? So year, do so. we close this hearing then? Um, I think so. <laughs> okay. We, no gonna, action. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll close this hearing with no action. Um, I make that motion. I'll second it. Thank you. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Um, and then we'll repost this for two weeks. For May okay. 16th? Yeah. Yes. And as you know, um, we've got more applications than yes, I'm uh, aware of that. Um, licenses available. So what the board has been doing is treating everybody evenly and asking the same questions mm -hmm. and reserving their um, decision to a time uncertain. But when they decide they're ready to address that, they're going to let every applicant know away so that At you're aware time. of the, the hearing and, and or the decision Mm -hmm. when it's on the agenda. What, okay. what we'd be looking for would be, um, you know, your hours of operation. Mm -hmm. Have you had tip training? Mm -hmm. You know, those kind of things. Okay. Yeah. And, and just, what else were you no, interested in? I was just curious when you were planning to open. I'm hoping two weeks. Okay. <laughs> I'm should, waiting for the contractors. <laughs> and she'll probably, you'll probably you'll open whether guys. or not you yeah. have the license. Right. That, that her opening isn't necessarily dependent on, no, right. on having the license. But I, I am so sorry. <laughs> I... I that's I, okay. I messed up with another one. So. I, I, had, I just looked and looked and looked for the return receipt cards, and then I looked in my computer file, and I thought, oh. so. That's what that's, I felt. <laughs> thank you very much. I really appreciate it. No, this is no problem. Thanks. Thank you. Well, Thank you. Wendy, I'm just going to give you this so that yep. we can keep, okay. keep it, because okay. I think everything will be the same. I wonder just why there were no abutters here. Just kidding. They usually don't show um, that, so. We oh, wait. Maybe there isn't a Kevin, um, we have a couple minutes before the um, Well, Kevin poll. has a lot more to say, I think. Yeah, but why don't we start on you, Kevin, so that yeah. we don't, won't be here for really, really long. I did give them the list. Really, really long. I gave them that list of items that you had, but maybe you want to pick the contract okay. first or something. Sure. Whatever you decide. Sure. We're, we're going to have to interrupt you when we have the poll hearing. Yeah. But no problem. I, I, I don't want to keep you longer than we have to. All no right, worries. let him go. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Okay, hello all. How are you tonight? Good. Excellent. Good. Okay, um, actually there's a few things we need to discuss we can go over. Um, obviously it's been a while since I've been able to come in front of you. Um, One of the ones that I'm not sure if, if Wendy has been able, had the opportunity to share with you yet <clears throat> about Sugarloaf Street on how DOT, Department of Transportation District 2, gave me some information um, about the layout of the road, because um, technically that is a state road. Yes. And the way it stands right now, uh, by statute, there is no parking on a state road, which basically means all of the parking in front of Primo's, Cumberland Farms, around the common and Park Street and uh, let's see what else is there. The computer place. Uh, technically those are all illegal, all illegal parking spaces. But that's never been enforced, Kevin. So, but what, what, what this all kind of boiled down to is, is <clears throat> excuse me, because <clears throat> I've been trying to push them once again, go ahead and take care of the sidewalks. I said the sidewalks are part of your layout. Obviously you've already said that they're part of your layout for the simple fact that you've gone through it and you've surveyed all of the handicaps. So the ADA handicap part of it will be done, but they will not take care of the sidewalks this round because they don't have it in their money. That in turn continued more of, of a discussion showing um, the overlay of, of how it is. And he says, now if, if we are to um, continue allowing the state to do what they normally do, and putting in, fixing all their ADA sidewalks, all nine yards, then they're going to change on how some of the flow comes into town. They're going to shorten up a little bit over there by uh, the old fire station. Um, they're going to change the curb line over there. Um, they will make the, the bus stop that's right there at Grave Street an actual legal bus stop. Um, but again, it, all parking will be gone. Or the town can take it over 
from the old fire department into the center of town. Lots of things you need to talk about or think about with this because remember, everything that's under the ground right now, all of, all of the drainage presently right now belongs to the state. As soon as we take that over, anything that's underneath the ground, all those utilities, now we take over and I'm not sure how old those are. I do remember the one thing that Hap told me before he left long ago was do not ever take back Sugarloaf Street he says, because unless they were to go ahead and redo all of the drainage. And that was the words of wisdom from, uh, from a we'll previous ask highway you, superintendent. I was under the impression that all of the drainage that's in that area is pretty much dry culverts. Is that incorrect? Mm, no, it's, it's, no, they're not. They're actually, they're not, uh, they're not dry wells. They're not dry they, wells? No, they actually do tied together. They are tied together. Yeah, and, and what we did was, um, do they I shouldn't say we, but Mike, Mike and Hap got together because part of that GIS um, program that we were trying to get caught up with, while we still had the opportunity of them, the, the GIS people putting their information in, um, so we jumped in on that, so that way we made sure the sewer stuff was put in. I grabbed all the stuff that was taken, um, all the information from uh, Prickett, as far as the GPS coordinates of all of our sewer um, manholes, which was part of our INI, &I, which they've already, part of that they've already uh, accomplished. So all of that information has now been put in. We've been able to have the size of the pipe, the direction of the flows. Mike, in turn, had also worked with Hap, brought him back in and started picking his brain, saying, okay, well, this manhole or this catch basin goes from here to there, from here, does it deadhead out? Is it a dry well? Does it go in through somebody's backyard that goes to a brook? Which seems to be a lot of the cases, depending on where you are within town. Um, so to make a long story short is, is there's a lot of stuff is all tied together and, and they are not all dry wells. You know. um, a lot of the stuff goes right and in, dives into the uh, uh, blacksmith brook. Right. Now, do you know, does that configuration that's right in the center of town stop just, I guess you'd say, south of the um, old fire station or do the catch basins down near um, the next street tie in, come flow back toward the center of town? That one I can't tell you off the top of my head. Okay. And I'm sorry, I should know that, but I don't. Right. Um, um, you know, the only other question I had is, uh, did you see what their plans were for the ADA sidewalk parts? Are they gonna, f in, the, in the bus stop um, improvement, is that gonna fit with what we had sort of, or started working on in the complete streets? I mean, are, what are they? Well, you see that that's where where everything. I guess really I want to look needs, at the plans needs before to come we come together and look at the plan, and that's why I'm kind yeah. of bringing this to everybody's attention now. I want to make sure everybody's aware of this, so that way we can get we can get. Do you ahead have of a this. timeline when they're going to start doing um, this? Realistically, they're probably not going to be starting for another year. But I just want to make sure I get okay. ahead of it, so that way we don't we don't get behind it like we did the railroad tracks. Um, let's. So. I think we should look at the plans sure. and and see. Um, because Trevor's been working on the complete streets mm -hmm. application. Yep. So let's let's see how what you think okay. some of the things they're doing and what the flows might be as to what Trevor has been working on. Because we, we hope to get our complete streets application in relatively soon. Okay. And um, I don't want them to do some preliminary planning or even start the engineering and then find out that that's not what we wanted them to do. So and if we could make what some kind of... concern about is they don't want to go through and yeah. waste... And I understand where they're coming from. I mean, they don't want to waste their engineering time or money we, if... And then all of a sudden we come and take it back over and say, well, we're not going to do this. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll take this section of the town back over again or this section of the road. Because um, like I said, it's, it's all up in the air right now. It's depending on which way you want to go with this. I just as one, we have to start that other. Yeah, hearing we have to start here. Can I just um, say a couple of things and ask? A, let me just, if this a fair question, a fair mm -hmm. summary. Basically, if we insist that if we don't take the street back, and they do the upgrades, we would lose the parking. At present time, right now, that is correct. Okay. But I'm I'm sure there is exemptions other places. I'm sure We're you just, know we have we have okay. not gone too deep into this. I mean, because obviously you look out of the 351 towns in the state of Massachusetts, there's a lot of state roads that run through their town. Right. And I can guarantee there's a lot of places where there's parking. Okay. Kevin, so, so as as I did before when we were I was here when we did the uh, train track thing, and I said, you're coming out and you're having a hearing, and you're not right. just going to push these designs through without us there. 
And I'd like to suggest that we do that again, if okay. we could, earlier. As far as, as, far you, as the ADA? perhaps one of the members board. of the board, yourself, myself, maybe Diana, who's helping with you know what? We need, grant yeah. writing and mm -hmm. stuff on Complete Streets or another MassWorks project, perhaps, for this area. Um, I just think it would be useful to do that sooner. Uh, I, I hadn't brought it up yet okay. when you asked, no. Okay. But um, now it sounds I, I like I actually want it to happen sooner than later because Steve Kulik's retiring, so we want to make sure right. that this is in the process and whoever takes his place can just follow up. Mm -hmm. It's not starting out. So, Definitely. I mean, we're going to have a little bit of um, so if we could set disadvantage, up. you know, with whoever takes yeah, this place. I think it would be useful to have a meeting back and forth so you're not put in the middle and that we can yeah, ask Kevin. questions. Yeah, Kevin. Yeah, no, I don't want to be in the middle. Maybe, That's why may, no, maybe we can schedule this for, like, June, okay. um, you know, next month sometime. Yeah, no, no problem. Okay. Right, so um, we we'll, have to do I'll, the I'll poll. and do the next poll hearing and I'll yeah. back in again. Do you, do you mind <laughs> staying just for a few minutes? Because sure. um, Chris Curtis is here, and I wanted to make sure you were able to talk. Okay. on the project. Um, so right now, uh, we have a scheduled um, poll hearing. Did the mic go So the Verizon person would be lovely to have you come up. Uh, good evening. My name is Paul Davis. I think, did our, did our oh, there, there they go. go. That's okay. So uh, Paul, could you just introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, name is Paul Davis. I'm with a company by the name of UC Synergetic out of Sunderland here. Um, we do contract work for Verizon, and I am here doing, or I'm here representing Verizon on their behalf tonight. Um, okay. Do we have um, the public hearing yeah, the notice? Whole packet. Yeah, and I would suggest, um, Wimmy, you can talk, walk them through it, and then as a motion, it seems to me I couldn't see anything different other than reading this whole page aloud unless you have another suggestion for how they should do this. i got a shortened version, if you like. Uh, okay, but why, <laughs> why don't you go ahead and explain. All right. Um, Verizon New England and Western Mass Electric request permission to locate poles, wires, cables, and fixtures, including the necessary anchors, guys, and other sustaining and protecting fixtures to be owned and used in common by your petitioners along and across the following public way or ways. Elm Street, place one jointly owned pole number T10 and a half E10M on the northerly side of Elm Street at a point approximately 258 feet easterly from the center line of Greenfield Road. The reason for this is to place one jointly owned pole to provide mid-span support to the existing pole line and to provide for transmission and or distribution of intelligence and telecommunications for the transmission of high and low voltage electric current. So basically what that means in layman's terms is that this pole being petitioned tonight would be one of two service poles for the new Cumberland Farms project down there on the corner of Greenfield Road and Elm Street. Okay, I see the petition plan. I have the order. Did, did we receive the a butter notice cards, Wendy? Um, that's, let's see, you guys do that, I think. I think we got a letter certifying that they had. Um, this is, um, remember this was scheduled earlier? Yes. And then not? <laughs> was it you who was here before? That would be me, yes. Thank you um, for coming back. I'm sorry about so. that. Yeah, no problem. So what's included is the notice to abutters, but it's not um, handled um, it's not the like same the way as a liquor license. Okay. So, but you think we got a, um, a letter saying it was, um, they were sent out? Okay. All right. Um, is there any public input? This is on the poll hearing, and Trevor did look into this, so. <laughs> oh, did you want to make a comment on the poll hearing, Trevor? Nope, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, so you looked into it. Yep. Okay, all right. Do you have the short? Um, I will make a notice on. Um, I mean, I will make a motion um, based on your discussion of the description. I'll second the motion. Is there any further discussion? None. Well, just a quick question: Do you want them to read something, or is what you read what you Adequate want them enough. to vote on? You said you have a shortened version. Is that what you read? Yes. And that's what they're voting on. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I'd like a copy of that if you can. Uh, okay. I just have long versions. So. Oh, you do. Yeah, I can make I'm a photocopy. I'm sure if they sent, if if Verizon sent you a packet, what I get is typically what 
the town gets. So, um, well, we actually didn't have a motion here in this in All my right. packet. I'll just attach this to the minutes. It's longer, right. but it's. The I'm good. It's only it's, it's just the setting of that one poll, correct? Correct. Yeah. Right. Okay. Then all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I thank appreciate you, so you coming again. No problem. Yeah. <clears throat> appreciate that. Um. So Kevin, you can come back up. Be as quick as him. Sure. <laughs> okay. See you, bye. First one's Kev okay. Second one's okay. You notice I, I, Kevin. You notice I smiled. I didn't commit. <laughs> Give me a half a second. Okay. Um. Hoosick Road. Hoosick Road being off of Stillwater Road. Um. We have the landowner there. Yeah. I'm going to use a. It's, it's going to be. A, improper terminology, but I'm going to use the word uh, bypass or side road of Hoosick, because technically it's not really a road. It is a path that back in the 1920s, one of the Melnick said, sure, you can go ahead and cut through here. Um, are you aware of where I'm talking about? The, yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the actual one, the actual road is down further down by Brian Natorowitz's house. Mm -hmm. It goes up that way. So the other way is more of a bypass or, or a subsidiary road, whatever you want to call it. Um, the person that lives there, um, Bob Melnick, you know, he, um, he's been very patient with a lot of the people, you know, because obviously everybody and their brother thinks that's a town road, which technically it isn't. Um, but he, in turn, has been, you know, trying to be nice about trying to get people to slow down and stuff like that. And obviously you can understand the reactions that he's getting. Um, and he's getting kind of tired of it. Um, and plus, he also has a water issue that is at this point in time. <coughs> that is, since he's built his house, um, he's had water in his basement because of the area of, of where it is. Now, the water was there, the road was there before he built his house. So the water is really not our problem, per se. But Actually, actually, realistically, none of this is really our problem because if he really wants to, as far as I can see, he can just go ahead and block the road, put up a Jersey barrier, and call it good. So okay. he owns Go the land under the road. He owns the land underneath the road. But and Google Map just shows it going out towards Stillwater. It does not show any road. Correct. Unless you're on satellite. But as far as the roads go, it doesn't show that as well. Well, I've got something here from 2006. I went through. Uh, registry of deeds this is the plan of the land um, and it's actually showing and this is what it states Hoosick Road no layout found through Locus maintained by the town and this is where I don't this is where the legality comes into it subject to any rights the public may have to the road I do not know what that means I'm not a lawyer, but if there's a guy that lives down Hoosick Road a mile and he's been there for 30 years and he's been using it every day, mm -hmm. you can't shut it off. Okay. You know? um, so what basically he was, the, the brief conversation that he and I had, a uh, very civil conversation, um, he was basically saying, you know, if, if I can't shut it down, if I can't slow him down, um, you know, at the very least I'd like to see if the town can go ahead and give me a hand with my water. I said, well, you know, at the very least, I'll go ahead and I'll bring it to the board. You know, it's, it's nothing that's super time pressing. It's more of just information now that I've got the three of you together. So that way you can sit down, you can think about it. I'll give you copies of these. So that way you can, again, okay. just think about the whole process and we can go ahead and, and move forward with it. Um, hopefully maybe in the next, within the next two um, meetings. Okay. okay. Do that council's so. in, input on this? Depending um, on what that says. Yeah. yeah I, I think... There's a couple ways we could handle this. I don't think we can apply for any money as a town to, you know, under the, to the conservation district to, because the town doesn't own the land. Right. So we can't apply for culvert replacement money. Mm -hmm. However, we might be able to have, have Bob Melnick mm -hmm. as the landowner mm -hmm. 
apply himself personally to the conservation difference district. I think, um, you know, for um, it's it's not it's not well, a continual standing water, so it's yeah, really right, not a wetland issue. Right, there's no um, wetlands there, and it's a gravel road that's correct. not of any surface, correct. and it's very narrow. I mean, it really wouldn't take you that long just dig a trench across there, put an eight-inch pipe, and put the gravel right back on top. Correct. Yeah. I'd go with 24, but yeah, is exactly. There, is there a 24-inch uh, one? Yeah, yeah. I always no. go. I'll, well, basically, what what any of the ones uh, any of the um, trainings we've been to. They says, you know, if it calls for 12 inch, go 24. If it calls for 24, go 48. You always double this whatever is, whatever it is because like, of water so, flow in the future, whole nine yards. That's probably the reason why we've got one of the issues over on uh, uh, Mill Village Road mm -hmm. where that pipe was too small when it was put in. You know, so originally they said, okay, well, that's a 24, 24 inch pipe, is, not a problem. This is it should have been 48 inch. Yes, pipe. this is part of the resiliency. You always right. upgrade. Can I ask, yeah. so uh, what are the water issues? Is there a stream or just when it rains? No, it just looks just like it's when it's rain, it's standing water. It's, got, it's, it's not draining. I guess on that road, but if you but if it goes to the other side, it, it can flow. It down. can it can it can leach its way down and then eventually make it to the brook. That's like within, I don't know, probably within 150 feet. We looked at because the brook obviously crosses the road right now. There's an old stone um, culvert right at this point in time, which would be west of his house. Okay, but trying to get the water from there on his side of the road from mm -hmm. there to the brook is going to be difficult. I mean, to the point that, I mean, I, I, what I did notice when we went there is when it gets really, when it gets really, really wet, he actually has a sump pump that he throws in the hole and, and puts the garden hose across the street I see. to uh, get the water out of his area. Is this year round or just in the spring? Yeah, basically it's year round. Really? He, yeah, he that's quite it. gravelly in that area. Exactly. So I know could, why why, why he, he doesn't have good sandy. drainage through yeah. there, I, I honestly don't know. Maybe he's got a chunk of clay yeah. underneath his area. Yeah. But obviously you would have thought they would have figured that out when they were doing the basement because it looked mm -hmm. like they must have done a full basement there. I think the last time I looked at it, it was fall and that we what? went. It was like October, yeah. I went out so. with Mike because the leaves were on the ground. So mm -hmm. I think it is a year-round thing. So, so this is just more informational purposes okay. for you guys, just that way. You know, so you're you're aware of what the issue is, um, and then that way I can I can try and bring some resolutions to this, and then that way you can make the final decision of which yeah. direction we'd like to go. Okay, I, I think Lisa should be involved though because we got to sort out how we're gonna figure out where well, to get the money. Maybe actually, I, the reason why I brought her up is if you were going to continue consider discontinuing it, but if you're going to continue, if you're going to consider just installing a culvert, then I don't think there's a legal issue. Correct. Well, well, personally, myself, I, I, I always like to know what all my people. options are. But would so we, we're I, not I would, clear of the standing of the road. I would ask what the standing of the road is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's well, where I would start. Personally, a whole myself, slew just that of way. those that we want to get exactly the because mm -hmm. we have so many issues throughout town as far as well. Then, uh, yeah, because you need to determine who is going to be the applicant mm -hmm. to try to get money. Right. So, okay, I, I mean, we'll have to figure out about that. What so would be the cost of putting in a culvert? A piece of pipe. Well, two pieces Days of pipe, later. really. So we're talking what, probably less than a hundred bucks. And less than a hundred dollars. Yeah, for yeah, the pipe. All I'm doing is pipe. So what yeah. do we need a grant for? No, no, no. Uh, I didn't. If, I didn't realize it was going to be that were, cheap. If we're to be doing a full-blown, you know, culvert whole nine yards, where you have exactly. to, where you have to follow <laughs> the the um, and permitting and all that kind of stuff. The, the stream, um, because everything has to be open bottom now. You know, and again, that's why we're kind of going back and forth. With that mill okay. village issue, because according to DOT, that's a culvert, and according to DEP, that's a bridge. But why doesn't he uh, just do it himself? I mean, if we're talking that kind of money, it's um, his well, property. I think, well, I think he's, he's kind of you guys. You guys are using it. Town's using it. Right. We both have some shared interest. Right. Here. I think okay. that's the general idea. And and the other side of the coin is, is I you know I think he's just trying to make sure that he's not going to get himself in trouble by shutting down the road long enough to cut it across or, or whatever that may be. You know? okay. Like I said, this is a very preliminary. preliminary. Yeah. Um, he just wanted to, to get his feet wet, no pun yeah. intended, get to um, talk as, about to, as to how the process works. Um, okay. So, so like I said, this is just beginning stages of. He just wants to be, you guys to be aware of this, and okay. uh, we'll, we'll take it for what it's worth. Uh, speaking of water, uh, 14 Lee Road, uh, Gabe Joseph, um, he's going to be looking for a, a solid answer at some point in time. Um, realistically, uh, I know Kip and I have gone by there. We've, we've looked at the area. 
there's a catch basin that's close by, but that's tied into 91, that drops down into 91. Mm -hmm. It's part of the state layout. There's no way we can possibly tie into that. The only way that we could possibly pull any more water out of of where it's going would be to basically do a series of... uh, almost like a lift station, because we'd end up having to, mm. if we were going to daylight at some place, we'd end up having to go down Sand Gully South, excuse me, yeah, yeah. Sand Gully South, and then drop into the brook in there, and that's better than a quarter mile. Um, or, you know, um, and, th- and this is where it gets really kind of difficult, per se, is originally, because, again, I've been going through the deeds, I've been looking through plans, I've been looking through all these different areas, because originally I was told that when Melnick sold the property, nothing was ever to be built there, and be aware that this is an area where the town leaves their water. You know, So this is all the water that's coming from Allen Drive, yeah. which is six there, and then there's three more on um, Lee Road, and then all of that, in turn, drops into his lower yard, which goes on down into the corner. Mm-hmm. Um, does it leach out fairly quickly? Yeah, you know, it leaches out there fairly quickly. But then again, I've also seen photos of the water within inches of his basement. Right. You know, and pictures of his kids uh, with kayaks out there. But the, the, the thing with that is, and, and I can sh- shed some personal experience, I tried to buy that land myself, and I did go to the select board at the time, and they told me, absolutely not, you cannot build on that property. Um, how the house ever got there is beyond me, but it's there now. The pipe was there long before the house was built. Um, and the reason that you have standing water there is not that it, there is a lot of water that comes out of that pipe, but it's almost always in the time when the ground is frozen. I think the solution there would be uh, a, the, the property owner could put in a dry well type thing. It would alleviate and at least uh, get, get a, um, an access for the water to get through the frost line. You know, if you dig down, you know, four or five feet, and put a lot of stone around something, a, a vast majority of the water would go there. And even if it did back up, it would leach out a heck of a lot faster than, you know, days or weeks. But, also, what uh, happened... Did you um, say dry well? Dry well, yeah. Yeah. What happened was um, that used to have a lot of growth that the roots would absorb water, and, and that has all been cleaned, clear-cut and cleaned, so you don't have the ab- absorption... Sorry, from the but roots. I think, I, and I could be mistaken because I don't see it all the time, but the conversations I've had with him and the pictures I've seen, it's usually in the winter coming into the mm-hmm. springtime when the frost is there. So, you know, even if you had a lot of plantings there, they wouldn't be taking the water at that time. Yeah, I guess I was just thinking when we have those so intense I think events. this is at least the second, if not the third time we've talked about this at yep. a meeting. How do we go forward on solving this and deciding whether the town will do this or what our liability is if we turn it back to them to right. take care of. Um. Do we have liability? I mean, I don't, I don't know if we do. I mean, if, if it said in the deed that this is where the water goes. Yeah, but that's uh, yeah, the problem is I can't find the deed. permit it? <laughs> I can't find it. The only thing I could really find in the deed is, is they can't have a chicken coop and they can't have more than two pieces of equipment and one camper and it was a few other things, but it had absolutely nothing to do with, with that section. And again, you know, I'm, I'm not the brightest bulb on the tree when it comes to looking up the deeds and the whole nine yards. I mean, I spent quite a bit of time on this, and I think I've done it, but there could be something in there that, that I missed. So, Why did the town tell you you couldn't build a house there? Because the town, it, the town drain went there, and it wouldn't support a, a septic system. Even though it's quite sandy in that area, mm-hmm. it's because the town dumped all the water there, and that was what it was for. And who in the town told you that? What, what officer? The, the Board of Selectmen. Because I tried to buy that from the Melnix myself. So. Not the Board of Health. Not the Board of Health. The board, well, they're saying. They were acting as the Board of Health. That's what I was saying. wondering. Yeah. 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 Um, hmm. Well. I, I hate to spend any money on legal investigation on this. Well, I mean, if you want to, you could always get a, an opinion from Lisa. I, I kind of think we should just bounce it back to the landowner, and I, <clears throat> you know, I, I sympathize with him, but I think that, you know, he could go in and put in a dry well there. It wouldn't cost him a lot of money, and I think that would resolve his problem. 
and I know his argument is going to be, well, the town's putting the majority of the water there. They should be responsible. But I also know that that was there long before the house was, and he bought it, and he saw it, and accepted it, and I don't know. I know, and the problem is we have these all over town. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's precedent setting. Um, I think I'll take it under. Let's yeah. let's take it under advisement for a little sure. bit longer, and I'll talk to Kevin more to sort it out. And yeah. You could um, also ask Lisa. You know what. Well, I need to go sort it out with him mm -hmm. before I yeah. ask Lisa. Yeah. Okay. I just, uh, Kevin, I'm a little worried about precedent setting. On well, that, this, that's, these yeah, are that's all the main over reason time. why I'm bringing it yeah. to you guys to, to try yeah. and get a handle on exactly how we want to go about doing right. this. Because this is sure not do, the only one. Make, well, exactly. Make sure we go about this the right way because, like you said, whatever we end up doing now is going to set precedence for whatever happens in the future. I know. So, and know, potentially and that's it why could we, be. That's why I continually tell people, you know, it's like, I. I I can't go into your property. That's your right. property. If I go into your property, there's 5,862 other people and want that the same thing. want their stuff. You know, I mean, I love that. I, I have that. some standing water too. <laughs> <laughs> so. um, okay. But my whole yard is standing water. Um, speaking of water, um, we'll go back to the Mill Village well, thing. One thing I just I'm want sorry. to note though, um, Chris is here. Um, yeah, so you and Kevin. And did you, I know you two just chatted. Um, yeah, briefly, yeah. We yeah. Just, so I don't know if you wanted to, so Chris could leave because you integrate a little bit in, okay. in what you're talking about. If that's okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chris. If you could come up and introduce yourself for everybody, and, and you might say why he's. Oh, Chris is here because Chris Curtis, um, <laughs> Chris Curtis uh, is our consultant that we had a small grant for um, uh, being certified for the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program. Um, it's the state's I version handed, attempt. I handed it all out. Yes, yes, I have it. Yep. Thank you. Um, it's this state's attempt to cover the gap left by the federal government pulling back on um, availability of grants for climate change resilience, resiliency. So, Chris. Thank you. Um, so we have, um, as as I guess all of you know, we've just recently completed our. Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Plan for Deerfield and submitted that to the Executive Office of Environmental Affairs. And I think it was the first one in the state that got um, approved. So the town now has its certification and is eligible to apply for uh, implementation funds. And there's sort of an exciting announcement uh, in the last few weeks um, from the state that they do, in fact, have funding for, for implementation, and it's, it's available to those communities that have finished their plans. So there's a fairly small number of communities that are potentially eligible. I think eligible. there's only five. Yeah. So that's kind of exciting. Yeah. There were actually a few that were certified before they started this program. Oh, there were? Yeah. Okay. But they were eastern part of the state, but we're the first of the new initial new crop. Uh, okay. So there's up to uh, $400,000 for individual grants to communities to to take um, actions to implement the recommendations in their plans. So mm -hmm. we have a set of specific recommendations and um, we prioritized a couple of things that we thought could be done um, with the very short sort of notice that we have that applications are due May 14th. And um, so we don't have a lot of time to put stuff together here, but uh, there were two things that we thought we could get done um, in this first round and then well, I guess it's actually the second round that's, that's May 14th, and then there's a third round that comes up fairly quickly after that that can help us to take it the next step beyond that. So anyway, what you have in front of you, I guess, is um, uh, an initial draft of a uh, grant application that we would like to, to recommend that uh, be filed uh, before the deadline comes up, and there are two main components to that. One is... Um, design and permitting for replacement of the culvert on Mill Village Road, which um, as you've heard from Kevin um, mm -hmm. uh, is in great need, and I'm sure you're probably aware of that already. Yep. Um, and it's in pretty tough shape. Uh, we took a look at it uh, last week, and um, yeah, I, just, I have some extras if you need any, too. Uh, so the idea would be to replace that with an open bottom culvert that would um, facilitate fish and wildlife passage, but also be big enough to accommodate storm flows and anticipated increases in storm flows. 
Uh, and the piece that we would apply for in this round is um, just the consultant procurement, hiring of an engineering consultant, um, and then the design and permitting for that uh, replacement culvert, but not the actual construction of it. Uh, and the budget that you have for this is a preliminary estimate that I put together um, kind of on short notice today uh, based on the average of a couple of other culvert, uh, I think three or four other culvert replacement projects around the state that were done fairly recently. But I do have, um, I have um, an estimate coming that will hopefully sharpen the pencil a little bit on this estimate and, and give us a, a number that's a, a bit more specific to this site. Um, so that's the first piece. And then the second piece would be to update the town's floodplain zoning bylaw and uh, floodplain maps and to seek formal um, adoption of, of those things at town meeting. Um, Existing floodplain zoning, I think, has, hasn't been updated in a long time, and the maps are pretty out of date. So uh, there's a lot of new provisions that have been developed over the last uh, 10, 15 years uh, for managing development in floodplains and for, um, for zoning specifically to meet federal um, flood insurance standards. So we would, under this um, piece, we would update that zoning working with the planning board. Um, we would work with FEMA, which has apparently already um, indicated that it's hired a consultant to do new floodplain maps. And we would take that data from the new FEMA maps and put it into the context of a, of a zoning map for the town that could go to town meeting um, and, and update your current boundaries um, based on the new data. And then work with the planning board to to do um, the steps that are needed to get uh, formal adoption at town meeting, so helping them with the public hearing and any public out education and outreach that's needed and presentations and so forth. So those are the two, two pieces, again, that we thought out of the plan could be tackled in the sort of short term and were the highest priorities um, so with that, I guess I'll ask if there's any questions. I would, yeah, I have a couple questions. And the first amount, the, the grant amount for $120,000 for engineering consultant and the town has to match it or put up $30,000, and that's just for the consulting portion of it? Correct. How, do you have an idea of what they're looking at is size of culverts? Um, well, Kevin, I was going to actually ask you to jump in if you have any, any sense of that because well, you know, um, that's... Well, normally, we should say normally, most grants do not even cover the upfront permitting and engineering costs. The town has to pay 100%. So this, this MVP program is very unique and fantastic because instead of going to town meeting and saying, well, we need you know $100,000 or $200,000 for permitting and engineering, we um, only need a match. So and this is... And you're waiting for a more solid figure on that part of it? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I've only had a couple of days to, even to look start at working comparable on this. work. So I've right. talked to an um, engineering firm about this, and, and they're going to put together a little bit more detailed estimate. So, Good. So these numbers, again, are just based on the average of three or four other culvert replacement projects that the <laughs> data was really out know. there and, and right. was available. But and it's those not, may not have been in the middle of a field with low traffic. and Right. Yeah. Okay. And we um, haven't determined yet if this is going to be an uh, open bond culvert or a small bridge, right? We haven't figured that out yet. Well, that's why. Correct. I, yeah. And, yeah. And that's one of the advantages that we have is, is um, we are going to be hosting, um, the town of Deerfield is hosting a uh, municipal culvert class on the 31st of this month. We're going to be actually having the class over at the South Deerfield Fire Station. Um, they requested. Thank you, Kevin, for to, doing that, by the way. To, well, it, it works out to our advantage, too. I mean, because we get two people that get to go to the class for free. Yeah. And I get somebody else to go ahead and, and pick their brain on, um, on how to fix this. Right. So the super long story short is, is the two areas that we're looking at is obviously Mill Village is number one. That's right. the one we definitely want them to look at. So that way they can go through 
You know, we've got the instructors coming out of Boston. That, that you know, the guy's done this for over thirty years. Um, a huge amount of, of experience when it comes to yes. knowing exactly what it is. Because realistically, if you if you're going to go ahead and you're going to open this thing up, depending on well, it really doesn't really make much of a difference whether you're actually putting in an open bottom culvert or a bridge. You still need still need to know. Um, you have to go. Upstream and downstream, you have to do your measurements. There's bank widths you have to measure. There's a huge calculation that kind of really comes into play as to determining the sizes of this. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest with you, I, I downstream side was very easy to get. Upstream side is, is a little bit more Muck. difficult to get because it, it the upstream side is a very short run, and then it just kind of spiders out through the entire area. Right. And now we're, um, that's one of the areas that we're trying to. You know, if we can get, get that, I mean, obviously, and, and that's where that's where majority of your problems are coming in from. You know, because if you can clean that out, then you're not going to have any problems further over. You're not going to have any problems on five and ten. You, you know, your problems that you're having over on the backside of mm. of uh, Wapping Road. You know, a lot of that those problems are going to come. You know, because if you can get the water to move instead of being sitting there, you know, stationary. Because as soon as as soon as that crosses over five and ten, right there, um. You've got standing water on, on the candy kitchen side. It's because the water's got no place to go. So if you cross over the road and you look, you can see there's plenty of open area for the water to go to right there. But, again, you, you go over another three and a half, four feet, and you've got silt that's, you know, the water's That's from only that landslide from 2011. It's a combination of a, of a lot of things. And then, and then, actually, if you follow that stream down, it should actually cut across, go towards that tree, and then head towards Mill Village. But there's also a catch basin on right in front of um, the candy kitchen that, realistically, when that water comes up, the water actually goes the opposite direction because the swamp is higher than the catch, the catch basin, basin in 5 and 10. I know. So again, kind of going back, and I, I'm not trying to stretch this out too much further, but just that whole section there on the east side of 5 and 10 is a horror show. Mm -hmm. um, I do know that Mass DOT is going to be in the process of, of redoing that section of the road from there all the way up. Um, yep. I got the project number, and I was able to get a project manager outside of Boston, one of the engineers, and I sent him pictures saying, you know, I'm not telling you what to do, but what you're dealing with. But this is this is this is something before you get too deep in all your phases, you may want to seriously start thinking about what you're going to do for drainage on this side of the road. Yeah. Um, to be able to, because if it's going to be, I, my opinion, it, it's a fairly easy fix um, to be able to take care of that that water on the east side to be able to get it over. But again, it all boils down to if that that swampy area has is all filled in with silt and the water's got no place to go. Um, you're going to continue to have the problems. You're going to have the health problems. You're going to have the, the, the septic system issues. Mm -hmm. um, you just everything's just going to continually snowball. I'm sorry. I, I, no, I, I looked at that uh, pipe that goes under that road, and I, mm -hmm. I'm going to guesstimate it's somewhere around 30 to 36 inches now. Yep. And historically, only when we have extremely bad storms is it a problem. But the big problem, like he said, it's is a sight line from that culvert all the way to the Route Five and Ten. Um, you know, and, and that culvert is, it, it is just one more thing, and, and I'm not blaming anybody. It's just government at its finest, $157,000. I mean, I could put in the same culvert on my own private property for probably $30,000, but, but they, we can't. We can't. <laughs> um, I did, Kevin, I, I, did I, reach, it, I, I did reach out to the um, Franklin Land Trust. They hold the conservation restriction on that property mm -hmm. between yeah. 5 and 10 in Mill Village. So they are willing to work with um, DOT and us to try to clean that out. And once we figure out what we can do on the Mosquito District as for dredging, because that we've already highlighted that as a vector for West Nile disease, so that's already been targeted. Um, so maybe when you get a project number, we can talk to the engineer, you know, take that project mm -hmm. number and follow up and try to get that sorted out. Um, the only reason I was concerned about this, Chris, is um, if, obviously, if they give us permitting and um, engineering costs under this program, they would fund us for the implementation costs the next round in July. So that's great. But if they determine that this is really a small bridge instead of a culvert, that small bridge program is kind of backed up from what I understand. And I'm not, I don't remember, is it a 25% match for the small bridge 
program, Kevin? Do you remember? I honestly don't remember off the top of my head. I, I want to say yes, but I don't want to. Yeah, I know, I can't remember number. either. But I know Coleraine has already got like eight, yes. eight bridges already. I mean, we were, we were at that meeting, and they yeah. already had eight bridges on the list. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the small that don't qualify less than 20 feet ones, right. which is what this would be. Right. So um, I'm just, just a hint that we would really like this to be an open bottom culvert, yeah, and not a bridge, because right. um, we'd get the engineering done, and then we wouldn't have a funding source. So I, I, I think we need to try to kind of keep this under the MVP program if we could. I mean, well, that was my intention. Right. Well, like I said, DOT is considering it a, a uh, they're considering it a culvert. Right. You know, and I was like, well, well I said, technically, I said, it's Because we did that, we, right. we had the restoration, um, river restoration people come out and looked at it. Okay. And they said it was a culvert. But then when Chris was out the other day, he said he thought it could potentially be, a, unfortunately, a small bridge. Oh, let's let's well, focus well, on it being a culvert, right? Well, just because we've got money available. Allegedly, when, when again, because I was trying to go back to try and get money out of the state for the small bridge program, that's when they said this is a culvert, it's not a bridge. Period. Right. So, so we'll, we'll take so, that email so, and hang so on to it. So I'm going off the theory at this point in time. It's going to be a culvert, and this shouldn't be an issue because right. DOT is the one that is the one that's dictating whether it's going to be a bridge or not a bridge. Okay. Is the way I look at it. All and right. And they've already said no. You don't qualify for this because it's not a bridge. It's a culvert. Yeah. So and, and you know because the guy looked at me and goes, "It's a 24-inch piece of pipe. It's not a bridge." Okay. You know, he says it's covered completely covered. You know he says it's not. A well, bridge. since we have to consider money and we right. and we want to get away with mm -hmm. having as much funding as possible, mm. let's let's just focus on doing it through the MVP program sure. and it being a culvert, and let's just assume that that statement was right. the statement that eliminated us from trying to have to apply to the small bridge program. Because exactly. I, I just don't want to, I know right. that's backed up at least. Mm -hmm. Wasn't it your impression mm -hmm. that it was already backed oh, up yeah. at least two or three years? No doubt. So we do the engineering and then it even could be outdated by then. So uh, I guess the question I had is, um, so, so you think it's, it's 24 inches. The reason I'm asking is when I was out there mm -hmm. the other day with your staff person, it was underwater completely, right. and we couldn't see it. Right. Well, what the, what the problem is, is is if you're looking on the upstream side of that, what I have right now is I have two eight-inch pieces of sewer pipe um, shoved into the pipe because that end uh -huh. got because and that's that's just to keep the flow going through. Yeah. Now, if you go on the downstream side of it, you go ahead and you look at it. The uh, um, the head wall starting to come apart. You know, because, you know, there was a couple of different things and we, we contemplated, you know, that we want to go ahead and, and try and, poor choice of words, supersede the system and go ahead and pull a piece of pipe through there. And then that way there's a lot of things that, that I'm not having to be requiring to do because all I'm doing is I'm just pulling a piece of pipe. I'm not completely disturbing the head walls, whole nine yards. But to be honest with you, the head wall is not going to be able to withstand being able to pull it, right. you know, the piece of pipe through there. There's just right. no way. Um, even if I was to replace it with the same size, um, you know, and, and part of two years ago when, when we put in that, that emergency uh, flood pipe, um, that kind of hindered us a little bit for the simple fact is, is as soon as I put that piece of pipe in, 5 and 10 didn't flood anymore, the road. The road. Mm -hmm. So at that point in time, then that kind of took away some of the, Immediate. Yeah, you know, immediate uh, distraction, per se, from, from the state. They're kind of like, well, well the, the road, our road's not flooding anymore, so. Mm. Well, we haven't had any events that have right. been over 35,000 CFS on the gauges. No, we've been up to 10 or 15 at the most. Well, we had um, June 7th and mm -hmm. October 30th this past year. It got up to, like, 29,000. Yeah. But it really doesn't flood... Mill Village until it's 34,000 right. CFS on the West Deerfield gauge. Mm -hmm. And then it's usually between 34, 35, and 40, then it goes over Route 5 and 10. Okay. So and we haven't had any, any uh, major, we haven't had any major, major events. Okay. So um, to say, the state 
the, the problem is I haven't been complaining enough because it, we, you know, when it got up towards Mill Village, I should have made a call into the desk and, right. you know, I didn't because it didn't actually go over Mill Village. Right. So uh, we'll just have to keep bugging them and right. we'll get them to the table. They've come to the, I mean, mm -hmm. we've had multiple meetings. I don't know how many meetings we've had mm -hmm. and we just have to figure out how we can get them to participate. But um, well, this is a start. Yep. So to answer your question, basically, it's 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 allegedly it's a 24-inch piece of pipe. Um, I'll be honest with you; I've never physically seen the pipe. I've been able to see the upstream end um, that was collapsed on, and we we're able to get some bars in there to open it up. Like I said, and literally, we just jammed some pipe in there just to get the water to flow. Okay. Um, and like I said, the, in the downstream side. <clears throat> Um, the head wall is starting to come apart, so I'm not going to. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to go down there, and I'm not going to shove anybody else down there either. You know, right. because that's starting to turn into a dangerous, dangerous situation. Yeah. yeah. So that's about what I know about that. So, so Chris, uh, what we need to do would be to to move this program along. I mean, how soon do you need a vote? How soon yeah. do we need to? What's that? Twenty. Tonight? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering, because you weren't sure about a solid number on that 120. Well, that could change, though, and come down. I mean, we're just applying could, for yeah. this grant and yeah. whatever we get. Authorization to file the application is what we need tonight, I believe, right. yeah, um, because of the May agenda. 14th okay. deadline. Look at the annotated agenda and see. Chris, let me ask you, what exactly is the updating of the floodplain zoning bylaw? What, how does this, I don't understand the correlation between the map and the bylaw. Okay, so the um, the map is a you know um, a distinct issue in the sense that the the maps that you're currently working off of are what probably 40, 50 years old. About 50. Um, with climate change, the you know the boundaries of the 100-year floodplain have most likely changed in some cases, perhaps dramatically. The floodplain is probably bigger than it was before because we're having more severe storms, bigger floods. Um, so adjusting the boundaries of the zoning district to match the FEMA 100-year floodplain maps as they are updated would be an important thing so that they're accurate and, and they make sense from a scientific standpoint. The bylaw itself um, is also pretty far out of date and FEMA has certain standards for flood insurance that each community is responsible for meeting in terms of managing the floodplain and so uh, just updating the bylaw to make sure that it meets those federal standards is one piece and sort of bringing it up to the current state of you know current state of, of, of the artist so to speak um, for zoning would be the the other piece that we would try to do it's again zoning is 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 something that needs to be updated on a you know probably every decade or so you should really go through the whole zoning bylaw and up, update the whole thing but this is one piece that we can do under this grant and, and bring it up to date. So the people that do the uh, floodplain maps at the FERCOG don't update them normally? No. 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 It's Army Corps of Engineers. Either. It's a federal program. Okay. Right. There's Actually, a consultant. The I, I got an email and I forwarded it to Chris, I don't know, what, two months ago? Yeah, Perhaps pretty recently. That, you know, just who are the contact people for town because they're, mm -hmm. they're, they've right. got the contract to start this work, correct? So they so they forward they, they farm that contract out to a consulting firm right. and that you know that work will hopefully be done in the same time frame as this yeah. you know, and I grant. I assume Irene changed a lot of that, right? I mean, yeah, wiped absolutely. out a ton of banks yeah, and just I think totally you can, rearranged. You can observe that you everything know, just yeah. driving around out there. Yeah. Okay. I, yes, our bank river banks are eight to sixteen feet below what they what were, were pre-Irene. Pre um, I just got an email today, as a matter of fact, that um, Great River Hydro mm -hmm. is um, scheduled now for June. They told me this month, which is a year since their license transferred, but it's going to be next month, June, that um, they will have their mapping done, which is supposed to have, it's the inundation maps that will supposed to have the new levels of the riverbanks. And so um, I think we can use, we can get the in-kind match from them um, somehow because they, as part of their licensing for 2019. So um, hmm. 
you know, if they – because we wouldn't be able to take advantage of this until the fiscal year of, of – I mean, because this funding probably wouldn't have to be spent until 2000 – you know, fiscal 2019. After July 1st. First, right. right. So it would qualify for their relicensing of 2019. So mm -hmm. I'm sure we can get the in-kind match mm -hmm. from them to do right. this. So I'll, I'll reach, I can reach out to Matt Cole and find out, you know, just start the conversation. Actually money from them? Yes, money. That we could use. Okay, so it's yes. not in kind. Well. It's not time. It they, is that it's not if our If they've money. already done the work, because one of the things that I want to make sure is he assured me that this whole new inundation map system that they're putting forward is post-Irene. And I asked, I gave him a couple of surveying points, you know, where that big berm got mm -hmm. washed away at right. the will near Charles Cross Road. Yep. Um, and that's one of the 16-foot level changes. And I gave him that reference point, and I said, you should be able to check that on your inundation maps. Make sure. Sure, because that was one of the points we had surveyed. So, so just, I don't know. just to be clear about the match, what what kind of, other than what is on the cover page here for an amount. Um, a, what, how else is it addressed in the application? It's in the, uh, the second document, um, mm -hmm. which is titled Scope of Work. Uh, for the floodplain piece, what I was proposing was, was an entirely in-kind match, which I think could easily be made up of the planning board's time, the meetings that are you know, taken um, to develop the bylaw and, mm -hmm. and to do the public hearing and so forth. I think we can cover it. It's a small match, and I think we can cover mm -hmm. that with planning well, board time. Plus, so there's Pat, no cash Pat Smith investment. That we, well, in we that do at spend all. money on Pat Smith, who works with us from FERCOG, so that could actually be. But at any rate, that's a documentable yeah, yeah. amount of money. Yeah. So that that would cover us in terms of the match on that, and then the on the consultant procurement for the culvert. I was thinking, you know, your time, Wendy. You know, assuming that. We'd probably be working together as we have in the past. There, you know, again, it's a small match, fifteen hundred dollars. That that would be easy mm -hmm. to, to to make that match from your time. Mm -hmm. So the only cash match that's proposed in this budget is for the actual design and engineering costs that we would have to pay out to a consulting firm. Um, and I, you know, I don't see any real way to make that work from from an in kind standpoint. Right. But, so, and that that could fluctuate depending on what we get for right. a quote. Yeah, and fund, I'm hoping it goes down fee. as well. Yep. Yeah, right. Yeah. That makes sense? Yep. Well, I'll make a motion to um, proceed with this application. I'll second the motion. Um, is there any further discussion, or do you have any more input? No. He just, just shocked. <laughs> no, I, I just can't see. I, I mean, never get over it. I'll never get over it because <laughs> we're going to spend one hundred sixty thousand dollars for not us paperwork. Uh, yeah, well, this yeah. is why well, it doesn't matter. It's we we pay is, taxes. Uh, you know, you. It, it, to do to pay for something to tell us how to do something it should only cost thirty thousand dollars. But I get we're it. We're not nineteen. 2021 anymore. What's that? It's not 1921 anymore. I wish we could. I wish it was I, 21. I know. If it was, I would have put a new piece of pipe in there. <laughs> it would have been done. Right already. That's, that's, right. that's my whole point. You know? I know. Common I sense has just gone right up Listen, the Listen, this is a wonderful program it because it, it does cover it. I know. The engineering. Know. Which this is, is nice. huge. Usually we have to pay for this up front, and then we get the grant. So this is a two-part reimbursement, which is... It is so wicked exciting, it is and since there's no other towns, well, thanks for your work. Getting yeah, us, uh, well, on this, and thank was, you for it was doing a your huge effort well on for, everybody's part, and yeah. I and it was wonderful that there was so much participation, and sign in, and Eagle Brook School um, provided a wonderful lunch, so that yeah. we got all the blocks checked off in a very quick amount of time. Yeah. So anyway, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Very thank much. you very much. Have a nice evening, Chris. Thank you. Okay, Kevin, we're still trying to get you through here. No problem. No issues. Do you want to do all of this tonight? <laughs> well, I mean, I think this is just actually yeah. a couple more things. Yeah. shouldn't take very long. Um, at some point in time, uh, you're going to be, if you haven't already, uh, the commons off of, um, which is one of the condos off of Lee Road, um, street light issues. Um, they were concerned about... When the street lights were turned off, um, 
during the the period of when uh, the Energy Commission was trying to help save us money and reduce our carbon footprint of reducing a lot of the lights in town. Um, there was a bolo that they were trying to do over there by Heritage Way in Adams Court. Um, they were very concerned about that for their 38 residents. Um, and the email is that they're basically, basically what they did was they took over the payments of the lights but now they don't want to pay anymore. And as now this is, quote, uh, we are now asking the town resume the responsibility of keeping our community lit and our res residents safe at night. The tax dollars that our 38 residents continue to the town each year should more than cover this right. So again, this is something that's up and coming. Um, I emailed her back and basically explained to her that the highway department had absolutely nothing to do with turning off the lights and the highway department has absolutely nothing to do with turning lights back on. That would be strictly between the select board and the energy committee. So again, just more of a heads up, up and coming. Sure. Um, okay. So that way you're not blindsided by it. Kevin, are they LED over there or not? No, I don't no, believe they're so. They're not LED? Okay. No. So that kind of coincides with the meeting I went to last night for the uh, Eversource emergency meeting that we had, which was done in, ha uh, down in Hadley. Um, long story short, uh, oh, I can't think of it. Edgar is retiring from Eversource. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, he's, um, he's which, really which good. Is, which is really kind of bad because Edgar is, is a huge asset to us. Um, oh, anytime no, he's I've nice. asked for anything, he's been extremely uh -huh. helpful holding yards. He does have a, a new following, um, and, and what I got out of them last night, they seem to be, um, maybe hopefully the, the heart is gonna be the same as, as what we had with Edgar, um, but we'll see how that all plays out. But the long and the short is, is, is a while back, we talked about what it's gonna take to go ahead and move forward with our street lights here in town, mm -hmm. as far as LEDs, the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. So when I talked with Edgar, he basically told me that we needed to he needs to calculate out what the what the price of the lights are because basically, and this is preliminary, so kind of bear with me. We have to buy back the lights to be able to allow us to put LEDs in. Um, again, more information that's up and coming. Um, you know, I will I will be getting a price here fairly shortly from uh, Ken um, Ken Gerber because he is basically taking over a lot of. Um, the other guys, uh, a lot of his projects, you know, because he cornered me last night. He goes, did I send you? I says, no, you didn't. And he goes, oh, he says, oh, I will. I was like, okay, well, thank you. Um, so we'll see how that, that kind of so plays out. Eversource owns the lights. Eversource They owns don't have the any incentive to put LEDs in them on their own. Negative, and they will not. We, They've already we made that perfectly Boston. clear. They will yeah, not change them to did. LEDs. When we were in Boston, we, we were sort of trying to sort that out because there's some kind of really in good incentive program. Mm -hmm. There is. And which so there is. We've got some info on that. Yeah. yeah. Which, which we could. There's grants that are out there that would allow us to go ahead and, and basically change them out. But, but you first also keep them back in mind, as soon as we buy them back, we own them. Right. I know. Who's going to maintain them? Right. So I that mean, was why we hesitated before. Right. So again, but no more information run. up and coming. Um, you know, again, you know, I'll, I'll have prices hopefully within the next week. Okay. So that way, by next time, I can forward this to you. So that way, you can digest it before you actually have another meeting. Um, that way, you have the information ahead of time. Well, with that information, I mean, would ever source be opposed if the town bought the lights and then put them up and be responsible for them? I mean, if we're going to buy them anyways. Why buy the lights back, then well, install them, and that, be that's part of the deal. You, you got to buy back what's up there. Yeah. So if we just it, provide it, it can't be a deal lights. of just you have them. here here you go you take your lights down go away and we'll put up our own lights. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. Unfortunately, it's you have to buy back the lights from them. Um, did you? And then you can go ahead and put up your own lights. Did you? I mean, the one of the things that Trevor and I asked is what what the experience is on the maintenance because mm -hmm. that was why. We actually, as a board, well, Northampton just did a whole bunch of. Northampton lights. does it. Amherst does it. Mm -hmm. We should they talk do their to own. The Greenfield does their own. Right. But I mean, you're talking cities. You're talking, right. you and know, full-time electricians. You're talking too. bucket trucks. You're right. talking. Right. I mean, you, you, you talk, you're talking in another division. I thought we had a bucket truck. We do, but you know, some of these you may not be able to get to. But again, now again, you don't have um, you don't have electricians. Well, so we could get one. Okay. Well. What I'm, what I'm saying mm -hmm. is if you could try to figure out 
in conversations what, what people's maintenance history was? I mean, what, when we hesitated last time, and it was like five or six years ago, we hesitated because we weren't sure what the maintenance was right. going to be potential liability okay. for maintenance. So if, if you just start in conversation or, or reach out, maybe uh, Chris Bouchard, who's that head of the DPW people, um, you know, the association, maybe he knows mm -hmm. what people, uh, it's the same one that you had reached out to for the information on the truck. Um, yep. Maybe um, he would have some idea of what, you know, people have done this like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And, and what they've had to shell out over the last 10 years. I, I just, before we made a decision, I want to make sure we're not picking up this huge liability. Right. Well, then, uh, and that's why I'm just trying to get the numbers together to, to figure it out. Because it was asked to me at one point in time, so I've just been trying to follow up with it. The two people who were the energy coordinators, Chris and the woman in Greenfield, they've been running these projects in Greenfield and in Northampton. They probably could have, so... Could give you some yeah. answers about that. Because the program that Trevor and I, we got some information on, that it was, it was correct. It didn't cost for very much to switch over. And then our operational cost, you know, the, the electric bills dropped dramatically. Right. So the payback was. Purchasing from every source the first time. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the payback was really quick. So I, I don't have a problem switching over, but. Right. How uh, do they meter those currently? Basically, uh, it's you're, you're paying by the light. You're paying by how many looms. Or, yep. or however. So it's just an estimate. They know how bright it is and they know the timing of it. So yep. they calculate. So it's an estimate. Yep. Okay. Exactly. That's, so so well, I looked at the bills and I couldn't really, the, I didn't see any metering. It's right. Just, no, you're no. wrong. Because if you yeah. actually look at it, when, yep. it, when, it, when it comes down, you'll, it's broken That's down into sections. That's if, it, if it's, we get charged even if there's a light out. <clears throat> yes, I know. That's so it's right. disgusting because Correct. it's not yeah. actually So if there's a light that's out, we're still being charged, charged for, it. for it. But yeah. if there's a light that's still on during the day, we're, we're getting free light. <laughs> Sorry. Well. No, yeah. Okay. Carol, <clears throat> Carol Collins is the person in Greenfield. I'm sorry, who? S Carol Collins, 772-1412. She's wonderful. She's very good. She okay. Does. Thank you, Kevin. Is, did you want to talk about the grease stuff? About the what? The grease. Kevin Lather project. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, got a, I just got a couple more quick ones in here. Uh, Captain Lathrop. Okay. Um, <laughs> Captain Lathrop, going off of the uh, uh, one of the proposals that we've got, we're still waiting on two more proposals uh, because it is more than ten thousand um, dollars to be able to change out the pumps, change out part of the electrical. Some of the electrical they're going to reutilize. Uh, we're trying to keep this down to a, a reasonable level, money-wise. Um, you know, but by the time you're all said and done, you know, between the electrical end of it and the pumps, uh, basically you're looking at about $40,000. Presently right now, I do have in my, um, my budget for FY18, I can do this. The money is there to do it. Again, we still have to wait for more quotes to come in, but these are the people, this would be AMP. And uh, Suez are the people that you called yeah. the quantum. We looked at the whole nine yards. Don't we need to do a formal? You know, I only, all I need is three more. I, all I need is three quotes. Under, it's, it's under fifty thousand dollars. Okay. So all I need is three quotes. Okay. Anything more than fifty thousand dollars, that's when it's required to go into the to the register. Okay. It has to be posted everywhere. Yeah. Whole nine yards. So well, I, th I think following we should thirty B. All it is is three quotes. I think we should move as soon as possible because I know that you guys spend a lot of time over there. Right, we and do. And those other pumps that burned out were what, five, six thousand yeah, dollars a piece. About so, six, seven grand a piece. You know, this is going to going forward. You know, we'll save money just in the maintenance of the guys mm -hmm. going there all the time. Was was this so. going to be a topic we were going to discuss when we got Prickett together, or are we keeping this separate? Statement? No, this is this is separate. separate. This is something that we're going to. I think we're going to just move forward with this. I mean. You know, because realistically, you know, because I, I know I know Prickett went ahead and they, they put together a different program, but they're looking at it at a different view, per se. Um, for, for a poor choice of putting this, this is a down and dirty, right. cheap, should give us 10 years or maybe more. And or you can go money. ahead and spend 150000 to 200000 all depends on what you want to do. Because if you go ahead and you redesign, because not very many people, from what I'm told, actually have wet wells 
You know, your wet well is all there is is there's just a, a suction hose or a, a suction pipe that's in there, and the rest of your your motors and your pumps dry. are in a dry section. Okay, so obviously if we're doing that, now you're talking about completely rehabbing or changing out what we have there because all we have is just a wet wet tank. Um, so this is the best we can do with a wet. This tank. is the best we can do with what we got without reconfiguring the whole thing. Is probably the easiest way of saying it. And this will save. And this will save the motors. Right. Uh, this right no, here, well, it's replacement of the motors. Um, but yeah, but it will save burning out. This will say they basically tell me that the, you can take a beach ball and, and throw, throw it into it. this pump, and it will suck it up, tear it up, and spit it out the other side. Oh, okay. But keep in the back of your mind, all that's doing is that's just You're allowing the product to move from the tank to the line. Now, right. all of the stuff that it still chews up still goes into our regular sewer right. collection right. lines, which eventually make it to the wastewater treatment plant. Which, which is still, still a doesn't major have a headworks program. Exactly. Um, but, again, this is probably the easiest down-dirty way of, of being able to take care of this for now um, at, a, at a, a reasonable cost that could be done in a short time. Um, basically, we're looking at probably uh, a good long day, maybe a 14 to a 16-hour day to be able to accomplish this whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, we've looked at multiple different ways on how we're going to deal with the... Uh, the sewage. I mean, because obviously, you just right. You can't shut it. You off. just can't shut it off. Um, Hold it. You know, so we, you know, we we have we have what they call a mud sucker. Um, you know, going and speaking with Kip. You know, I'll get in touch with, uh, reach out to Cocot to make sure we've got an additional one um, on hand. Mm -hmm. You know, in case we need one, so something happens to it. You know, there's other options we can do. You know, we can go ahead and we can have somebody come in. But now you're talking 125 to 150 dollars an hour for a vector truck. Right. You know, plus their people, you know, in a long day, you know, you're talking a 15 hour day times 150 an hour. You know, again, you know, it's, it's, I'm a sore user too. So, I mean, I try and keep the cost down as much as I can because everything that mm. I quote unquote spend money on here comes out of my pocket personally, also, besides all the other users in, in town. Oh, well, I thought we were going to assess a betterment charge to those residents for that. That I mean, is up to directly you. used by them, not the whole sewer users. That is that is. However, you guys, you guys being the the um, commissioners, sewer commissioners, that's completely up to you. That is outside of my realm. Yep. Of my my job is to make it work. Yep. And try and keep it safe, and then the political end of it. Do we have that's, a precedent that's, for that? that? That's, that's I, you, I, you guys. I think you could do betterment charges for sure. I mean, um, well, I mean, if you think about it, it's the only ejection pump we have in town. Yeah. And, you know, it, the issue has been coming directly from the residents on that street. That are causing um, this And issue. they've had notice, and it, the problem, this is the best way that we can deal with the problem. Okay. Uh, just like. The frontier thing, I find it unfair to make the rest of the sewer users, you know, bear the, the cost of something that is a problem caused by them. No, not to say that these other items don't happen elsewhere, but okay. you know, just um, an opinion. So do you want to make a motion or? Uh, a motion for? To, to move forward, forward with this. No, I make a motion. Captain Lather project. Yeah, I make a motion that we move forward with a, a new pump um, Process at uh, Captain Lathrop Lift Station. Second. Is there any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. Kevin, Thank you. I think you can go ahead. Beautiful. Um, I got two, well, two, one is, and one again is just another, uh, more of a heads up. <clears throat> um, we, we continually collect brush and leaves and stuff at the transfer station which is a, a great service, I feel, to the, to the residents of the town for the simple fact there's a lot of towns out there don't. that do not accept any of these things. Or if they do, they charge for them. Right. Um, so what, one of the issues that I have is I've got a pretty good pile. Yeah, it builds up quick. And, and I need to pay someone to come in and grind this because this is... Basically, I've got two and a half years worth of brush that needs to be ground. We're working with three different places. I've got prices from Wagner. Um, I've got prices from Recycle 360 out of Westfield and Demers out of, um, 
one or the other. Montague. So anyway, long story short is it, I'm kind of looking towards the mirrors at this point because the process on how he's looking at it seems to be the cheapest way that we can go through this. You know, the bigger stuff we can go ahead and we can chip, but the smaller stuff runs through his tub grinder. Mm -hmm. So he can run his tub grinder through and grind this thing down. And then we can go ahead and take this huge amount of wood chips that we presently have right now, mix. So every load of, of tub grindings that's set off to a side, we can go ahead and we can take some of these regular wood chips and blend them together, just kind of put them together. That way he can re-grind them again. Um, and and we're, gonna have, we're gonna have a huge pile of bark mulch, which will obviously benefit us as the town, you know, for, for our own usage so that we don't have to go out and purchase it. And at that point in time, then the select board can make the decision on what we want to do with the excess that we have. Mm -hmm. You know, whether we want to make donations, we want to try and sell some of the stuff, we want to try and say, okay, well, you know, it's, it's so much a truckload if somebody wants to come by and buy it. Um, again, just more information that, that I'm just trying to, to share towards you. Um, what do you think the cost is now to grind it up? Presently right it's now, be some um, days to do basically that. He's, he's looking at probably about three days and, and I'm gonna give you the high side. Um, the high side, Wagner, was, was uh, 10 grand just to grind what was there. Um, to do other stuff with the, with the wood chip pile uh, was another 3,600. And then the wood, which is another issue that I need to talk about, is um, the wood at the, at the highway garage, mm -hmm. the, the big chunky stuff. Right. Um, Realistically, the big chunky stuff, that was 2600 bucks. Realistically, for 2600 bucks, I can load that stuff up and I can bring it to them directly and, and, and get, a, get a better price on getting rid of it. It's, and it's not like it's good cordwood. It's not right. like it's, it's... Just, is it pine or...? A, well, I've got quite a bit of pine that's up there, but I've also got some big, gnarly, knotty, yeah. chunky is it, things. Is it at all nobody... like a root wad kind of thing? No, no, this is okay. strictly a... a Big tree Limbs. trunks. Yeah, trunks. big tree trunks is what they are. So I mean, the equipment that this other firm that you mentioned from Montague is it similar to what Wagner's have? Because I've I, I haven't seen the other operations, but I've seen this Wagner mm -hmm. uh, people in progress, and their equipment is so large. I mean, they really get rid of a lot of stuff very fast, and uh, the type of equipment they have makes it pretty quick. You know, they they can grab. Right, the pile and right. with the same piece well, of equipment, bring it around, stuff it in a chipper in the back, and it's mm -hmm. yeah, it's real fast. Very simple. And you know, I I don't know if you had the conversation with them, but I know that they have uh, several customers that burn this. So right. know, I don't know. Well, maybe that part I wasn't I wasn't aware I mean, of. They, I don't. I'm not a big fan of it because my neighbor does quite a bit of it, and it smokes up the neighborhood. But they go through. I see Wagner's making large mm -hmm. trailer dump loads to them, you know, every other week or something like that. All right. Um, remember, we were supposed to save root wads, uh, trees. Right. Tree yeah. Wads. Correct. No. This okay. is this is well. This is this, this is, is from all, this is from tree yeah. takedowns. Right. This okay. is from stuff that's rotted, that's fallen over. Root wads for Riverbank. Riverbank. Oh. Riverbank projects because when we do restoration work, it's um, which you would love. It's about a million dollars per thousand feet. And so one way that you defray the cost in kind contribution is we collect the root wads and then they use our root wad, rods, wads to jam into the banks. And Basically what we do is we try and take about eight feet of the trunk, keep that with, still attached. That's your, that, that they way they drive can jam into that the banks. in and then the root wad itself goes ahead and slows down the water, uh, turns into eddies, brings it more uh, aquatic life. You know, the fish right. really love it. And that saves us approximately six or seven thousand dollars per root wad so and that's our in-kind contribution kip anybody Kevin. with root wad out there we're yeah. interested in <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah we'll take your root wad <laughs> <coughs> um and then probably like one of the last ones i just want to just drop into real quick is with the final purchase of the land next to the highway garage for the bakers. Um, there's always, there's been that kind of like that little water supply um, hindrance that's been kind of laying out there where they originally told me that 
well, we're going to put our new building here, and you have to move the water line. And I told them that that ain't happening. Right. Um, so they, in turn, were looking at a way of re-diverting it closer towards Sugarloaf Street and coming around and then going down into, um, into Merrigan Way, tying into there. Does that make sense, though? No, no, especially seeing how well it's it's I, I personally don't like the idea as a as a taxpayer um, for the simple fact is, is now we have to run into some type of an agreement with them. See, originally they didn't have originally they were just going to say, you know, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's all OK. But then somebody went ahead and put the idea into their head that, oh, well, now you have to have an association. So if you've got three pieces of land there and that three pieces of land are being supplied by this water because it's a private private water line so now the water line belongs to them but now they want us to go ahead and become part of an association and pay a yearly fee towards capital improvement the whole nine areas in case they ever have a problem and then when they do have a problem if there's capital then the money would come out of that and if not then they'd be coming for us for one third of whatever the problem is um, again uh, we discussed last year um, I did get one quote just for 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 quote purposes um, was from Cocotts uh, was thirty eight thousand six hundred dollars and that would put in a new water line from Sugarloaf Street to the highway facility it would tie in on the far end uh, like by where the, the closest fire to fire hydrant is we can tee right in there and it come back in it would feed us and then the rest of the um, the pipe has been deadheaded on the west side of the driveway to for future, which will be the brooch company. Um, so that would be their water feed. Um, I've got the contingency money for it right now. If we uh, if we do this, well, it, I, I would like to just hold off because first of all, everything works well mm -hmm. the way it is, um, and if the the brooch company comes in, there's still no issue. The agreement that we had with the bakery was they were going to correct the water supply system. Correct. So I think that if it comes time for them to build, then we can say, look, you know what, we don't want to get involved with this partnership thing. This is where it needs to go. And if we can't get them to pay for all of this, we should be able to get a good portion because they, they agreed that they were going to move the water line. I had conversations with their engineer at the time, and uh, I didn't, I didn't like what they were telling their clients because they made them see, make it seem like it was going to be a wash. And for the great amount of distance from Merrigan Way over to Coates Ave and that other private line didn't make sense to me at all. So Well, it was um, a nightmare in the long run. It, it was a nightmare. So I think they've gotten different engineers. So I, I, I would suggest that we just wait until, mm -hmm. you know, we find out what the bakery's going to do. Okay, just, just so you're aware, yep. July 1st, my monies that would pay for it yeah. are gone. Well, we'll get. I'm just. Yeah. I'm just. Yeah. I just wanted to put that out there. Yeah. Just so you're aware. Right now, I have money to do it. Yeah. July first, I will not. You mean put our put our uh, line from Sugarloaf Street because right now it comes from Coates Ave to Correct. your building. Correct. Actually, it comes in ties in from two different ways. It comes Could in because that that is actually a loop area in there. Okay. It runs between two houses north of Paul Alice's house. Yep. And then loops through the property, and then eventually makes it over to Cotab. Um, couldn't we um, get the brooch company to reimburse us for part of this? Um, because they, when we they go will, to develop, no, they they will pay the water. Well, just keep in the back of your mind. This yep. is all this is all private, private water. So we could we could assess them um, a fee as the water department would, you know. But it, it would be you know maybe four or five thousand dollars i'm not real sure what the connection fee is but you know you have to keep in mind that the bakery even if they said to us that they didn't want to pay for part of this they have to maintain that loop around so it's really going to be to their advantage you know well, well that's why this. i was thinking why don't we do this and then get reimbursed from both the bakery mm -hmm. and the brooch company i i don't as hookup fees I, because that, that would be, be negotiated. It has to be negotiated. I don't yeah. think that's a good way of doing it. That's, <laughs> so I think it's a poor practice. Um, I, I just, you know, I think that their their obligation is to fix it. Right. And um, okay. I think that if we make the change, I, I think they could get out of uh, paying anything more than an, uh, whatever the 
the water department, which even though I understand the water department wouldn't be responsible. Now, isn't Merrigan Way a town way now? It is. It, it is. is. So everything was sent to the state. Yeah. So then, this is another thing to look at. If we say to Kevin, go ahead and do this, the minute that goes in Merrigan Way, now it belongs to the water district. So right. when these they people said connect they said they will not. They've already made that perfectly clear. They will not take any responsibility for that line. We put a line in. They said it is going to be a private line, is what I was told. Well, I, I, and, and I agree. I've heard the same thing. Mm -hmm. I disagree that they have that authority. All of the pipes that are in town roads are part of the water district. But okay. I, it doesn't sound like we're going right. to make so, so, again, more informational this, so. purposes. I yep. just want to yeah. you know, want you guys to be aware of, of what's going on. Sure. And, and the time is, time is ticking on the cash. That's all. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, again, just more information. So that way yeah. you're aware make, of what's going on. Maybe yeah. in a couple sure. weeks or a month we'll have more information, yeah. too. Okay. Because so. it wouldn't be that big a deal Oops. to get it to do it, would it? No, I mean, not that's really. a, it, it's it, not a big just project. Be, it, just, it, it would just be scheduling. And again, because, you know, fortunately, you know, the, the, fit, the 30B um, procurement laws have changed to the point that it's not quite so um, difficult to do anymore. Right. You know, less than 50000 as long as that, that price right there is, is ballparked. You know, okay. and again, that was that was a rough guess off the top yeah. of his head. Yeah. You know, he came yeah. in, he looked at it, and he said, "Okay, we can do this, we can do that." I, and I told him, I said, "You know, don't don't spend a lot of time on this. You know, right. just give me a ballpark price." Yep. So. No, that's that's fine. So it looks like we have plenty of time to think about it some more. Yep, that's it. The sewer that's, issues with the grease and chemicals and whatever. The fog contract you want to talk about? Fog contract. Yep. Yeah. Um, you guys saw the new one. It's in yep. your packet. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're okay um, with that. I'm a, we're okay with it. Yeah. So so as long as as long as uh, you guys can sign that, we will. Um, that would be fantastic, and I will go ahead and I will forward the, that. The change in the change in uh, the sampling was because we're purchasing. Because we're purchasing the unit mm -hmm. instead of just okay. renting it. And renting it was twenty three. I'm sorry, you have to bear with me. I don't have that in front of me. The the purchasing was or the rental was twenty three right. something. So, just to make sure, if you have this, the the total contract that we're signing is for eighty eight fifty one. That would be correct. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, that the top four thousand dollars was not included. That's what was removed. Correct. Correct. That is okay. correct. That's there. And yeah, yeah. Task, task, task five, task three down have been removed. Right. And so we, you're basically you're paying for task one and task two. Right. So once once we go ahead and we get into that section of it, and then I need more help because there's going to be yes, I there's, there's going to be parts where I'm going to need more help on this. Um, At least they're listed. There, it's it's listed, and then that way I can move forward with it. And the, this as I equipment, need. I know we spoke before, but it is something that we can use going forward. That is correct. Yeah. That is something so, that so we will purchase. You want a motion for the 8851 right now? Yes. yes. Tonight? Yes. 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 Okay. We make a motion to sign the FOG agreement with 80, David and Prickett for 8851. In eight cents. In eight, eight cents. cents. I'll second the motion. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, just so you're aware, you know, there are going to be a couple, couple tools that I'm going to end up having to purchase. Um, you know, we can utilize some of the stuff that's at the, at the uh, wastewater treatment plant right now. You know, we've got harnesses, but, you know, he's got the, the, the rescue tripod for the, uh, uh, the confined space. Um, mm -hmm. As far as the training is concerned for the confined space, that's not an issue because I'm, I'm an authorized trainer, so I can go ahead and make sure that our guys are trained up for, the, for that. Um, but what I am going to end up having to purchase is I'm going to end up having to purchase a uh, five gas meter to... Uh, Basically, make sure that you know when the guys are going down in there, and, and you can buy real cheap ones. Um, I don't want to buy a really cheap one, you know, because the long story short is you buy the really super cheap ones. They don't really last that long. I don't want to be penny wise and dollar foolish. I really like to be able to have one that's got my own little kit, so that way I can make sure because because underneath uh, 29 CFR 1926, as far as OSHA is concerned, they they basically tell you exactly how you're going to go ahead and bump test these things. And you have to calibrate these things mm -hmm. um, to continually send these things out to be calibrated whole nine yards. It's it, it extremely cost uh, prohibitive. Um, and I've done some little bit of research, and this is this is an outside cost one, about fifteen eighteen hundred dollars, and that includes everything. Um, includes all of my additional tubing to be able to go ahead and take the extension of the tubing to put it down inside the sewer to make sure we don't have the explosive gases, make sure we have proper you know oxygen levels, whole nine yards, and it also includes a calibration kit that goes along with it that you go ahead and you set it right on this and, and it does everything for you. Um, I can go out, I can buy one for four hundred dollars, 
and it's okay. And then as soon as I need to, well, basically a month goes by, and then I have to send it out to somebody to have it calibrated. So for the, you're saying basically the fifteen sixteen hundred dollars you got a more quality mask with Correct. all the testing equipment stuff Correct. like that that people and wear. Those no, well, it's not, it's not a wearing. This all this is it, it's, oh, it's, just, it's, it's, it's 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 basically okay. it's it's a little bit bigger than, than right. my phone and it's got a hose on it. Okay. Um, and then you sit there and you you pump on the you pump on the, the little ball on there and what right. it does it sucks okay. the air from there and it brings it into the into the meter right. and the meter okay. itself tells you what to do or it tells you what what your levels are your low explosive limit your higher explosive limit. Um, your CO, your your uh, oxygen level, um, because all of those obviously come into play. Well, to me, it's a safety issue, yeah. so I'm I'm really fine with it. Safe. Do you want us? Do you want us to actually vote on it? No, no, you, you don't need to because I'm allowed okay. to. That, yeah. That's that's within my realm. But again, I just want you to be well aware yeah. of it. You know, that's originally, if I was in, in I have to apologize because one of the things I was looking at was trying to go ahead and get that thing pushed through through the Maya grant. You know, because I'm quite sure that Maya probably would have gone ahead and purchased it for us at that point in time. Mm. But um, we're, 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 we're looking at the bigger dollar things at that point in time. Well, I, I think the town had no problem spending $34,000 for a lawnmower, so I think this is absolutely <laughs> fine. 17000 okay. What do you mean 17? No, they approved $35,000. The um, yeah, yeah. our, our cost. Kevin, um, yeah. about the when you, do the, yeah. when you, when you send someone down like that, um, do you notify the tech rescue people? Actually, yeah. What we're supposed okay. to do is we're supposed to be notifying them. You know, and a lot of people, unfortunately, because, you know, again, I teach this class all the time, um, people, for the most part, think, oh, I'll just call the fire department. Well, you know what? South Deerfield Fire is not... Have a tech rescue. Is, is, well, yeah, exactly. We're we are not because I'm part obviously. Part I think of South they're coming from fire. Chicopee, aren't they? No, actually, you will will pull them out of Turner's. Oh, really? They have yeah. it that yeah. close. Okay. Yeah. But that's a regional team, so it may take time for them to an see. hour, an hour and a half to get all of their people together. You know, it all depends on the time that, of the day I, where everybody is. That's what I thought. They had a standing tech rescue in Chicopee. Right, but that's what, why of, that's why that's one of the advantages that we have because. Historically, usually, anytime you're looking at a tech rescue, it's because something is something has dramatically gone wrong. Whether right. you've whether you've had a, a wall failure, whether you've had something like that, you know, where we're going to be going down inside the sewer, you know, realistically, the only thing we need to make sure that we we don't have a problem with is going to be the hand crank right. on the cable that attaches us to the employee, you know, and and at that point in time, so, uh, well, know, I worst just, cases. Thank you for being so safety conscious. Yeah, I, I was just worried about that. Because I well, know we definitely de definitely need to I've make sure we take care of our assets, and um, our assets are our people. Well, on, we fund the tech rescue at, from Homeland Security, mm -hmm. and I, I've heard complaints where, you know, there's no no pre heads up right. uh, when people. Oh yeah, are. oh I'm sure yeah because there's so many times that this they yeah. just have no idea, and all it is just a simple simple phone call, just be, hey be aware, you know this is where we're going into, um, so that way once again they they've got the heads up. Okay. I have a question just about OSHA 10, and did that bill legislation pass to put those requirements on municipal employees? Yeah, all that. Well, you know, realistically, you know, because everybody goes, well, we're not an OSHA state. Well, you know, well, we're a municipality. We're not underneath OSHA. You've always been underneath OSHA. Yeah. You've always been underneath. Absolutely. You've always been underneath the yeah. federal law. Yeah. You know, when, when you look at that, because um, Massachusetts had their own worker safety, okay? So when they, when they look at that, they can make it more stringent than OSHA, but they cannot make it less stringent right. than OSHA. Yeah. So the theory is, is you know, once again, so many people in the past are saying, well, we're not an OSHA state, so don't worry about it. They can't do anything. That's, they're burying their head well, in the sand. Why do the municipalities problem, fight this so much? Uh, it's more, it's because are, of So my question is, are our people OSHA 10? Everyone that we have presently that is part of highway is OSHA 10. Great. That is correct, and and we and and I continually go on and do do our upgrading, um, you know. Like I said, we're going to be doing a, a confined space up and coming. Um, the other thing I got to get into them is going to be the silica training um, because of the new silica rules and regulations that came into play, um, which is is it it it, it kills me because they've gone from from nothing to over the top um, to the point if if I want to put an, an eighth inch hole in a concrete crease over there it either it, it's you, you have to have a whole program on how you're going to accomplish this how are you going to do it is it going to be a wet method you're going to use a vacuum the vacuum it has to be the HEPA, HEPA. it's got to be yeah. this it's got to be that the whole nine yards but when I started looking into this I was like okay well because again I, I teach classes 
I said, well, let me see what there is for videos out there. So I found a video, and I was like, hmm, this is really kind of interesting. And it was from the State Department, uh, State Department of La Labor, Labor Department, United States, yeah. and said on how bad silica is for you. Um, they did this big study, and it's horrible, and people are going to die from it. 1938 is when the movie was produced. Wow. And this is 2018, and now they're pressing yeah. the issue of it. Where have you been the past 80 years? Mm. Well, people opinion. passed away from that. So, I know. but yeah, so long story short is yeah. Okay, uh, it our is people, our people are but trained I know a couple can, of guys in their 90s that still cut concrete all the time. Yeah. So I mean, it's, it's like smoking cigarettes. You know, yep. I've, I've seen some people that have smoked cigarettes their entire life, and yep. you know, they die from something else. And then you've got other people that smoke for a week, and all of a sudden they ended up with, with lung cancer. It's, all depends on how, you, how your body takes it in. So. Good. And that's about all I have. That's it. Thank Sorry, you. I know it's been kind of, kind of long, but like I said, it's, it's okay. been a little bit. Kevin, good to that's see you OK. Again. I Thank just you. want you to know it's wonderful that you're back. Yeah, it's good I, to be back. Thank you. Yeah, it's thank you so definitely much. Definitely feeling much better. For so. coming back. <laughs> yeah, well, it's all part of the job. <laughs> no, you're looking great. Thank you. Okay, good. Have a good night. Thanks. Thank you. That's it. Um, nope. We have the marijuana. For, um, yes. Yes. Since we've all been, I said, all I just talked okay. about it briefly yeah. earlier. Great. I've drafted a protocol um, to hand to contacts. I'd like everybody um, to contact me. I've gotten several, but they're calling all of us and they're calling inspectors and I want us to all be on the same page. Oh, I'm sorry. So I'd like to have this, what? What was that again? I'm sorry, oh, I missed the first part. I was just saying I've drafted a protocol here. Oh, thank you, yep, gotcha. You actually saw this, you two apparently were at the session at, this is what it looks like. Yeah. Yes. The session at the MMA conference um, where they talked about this, and this is just something we could hand out <clears throat> and I can give to the inspector's office, and it would just be what, we're, what we expect. Um, I, um, I'm actually okay with this because we did go to that meeting. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't really have anything more to add. Did you? Trevor? It's no. basically letting people know, letting businesses who are interested now that the zoning has passed in town. And, you know, I was told by one attorney, we'll be calling you the next day. I haven't heard from them today yet. So, um, at any rate, this just sort of, um, this just puts us all on the same page. What the expectation yep. is, because um, everybody's going to have a different story if we don't the only, have the same the story. The only thing I don't remember <clears throat> is um, when the meeting notice is published in the recorder, sometimes they make you do it twice in a two-week period of time. Do you, did they ever figure out what that regulation was? Were they, there is no regulation. So they're just it's saying, our decision. So it just needs to be published once and then yeah. that's it? Okay. Yeah, L letting the schools know our decision. I threw that in. I mean, it's not in the regulations. It's the right thing to do. Um, it's the right, it is the right so thing to do. The, Actually, I'm modeling this after, but changed a bit from what Montague is using. So, Wendy, is am I understanding this right? Who hosts the community outreach? They meeting? do. It's all they, on, all on, them, all so on their own. Them. Yep. yep. That's why I actually Montague did not have this in, but I added uh, the applicant will make must make their own arrangements for newspaper notice and with FCAP for recording and broadcasting. I thought that you, mm -hmm. it was vague in, the, in what Montague had, so I added that in. And it would, they would also have to notify you so we can verify it, that it was all done? Um, where Should is you that? put that in there? I don't know if it is or not. Well, when they come number four, mm -hmm. um, they have to show this to all of us. You okay. know, that's yep. part of their presentation right. uh, as when you, for a host agreement. Um, and that was after they go through the planning board for special permit granting. For the special permit. So they go to planning board before they come for a host agreement? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just don't want. Hmm. Um, 4B, copy of the special permit site plan review record of vote. Okay. Yeah, there's no point in, ho in negotiating a host agreement with someone who can't get through the sure. siting process. Um, so what and, and C is the same, dra a draft application. You know, it can't be yep. final until after. Um, so but this would give us a sense of what they're submitting, and they would. We'd also want to see what they propose for host and community agreement, 
and we can take it or leave it or begin that as a starting point for negotiating. So. Now, Carolyn. And this applies both to cultivators as well. Well, that's, that's what was going to be my point. So we can have multiple um, host agreements with multiple growers, correct? Yeah. Okay. The, so the only if, limitation or our rollout was to have one marijuana establishment. establishment. I get that. I, well, they're all I, under establishment, but retail, retail. Right, retail. Right, retail sales. I guess what I'm thinking of real quickly here, <clears throat> just so we can discuss it, is um, this probably wouldn't happen. But what happens if we get four or five people that come to the planning board? The planning board process is going to be long and expensive for the applicants. Mm -hmm. So would it make more sense to see if the town would be willing to give them a host agreement before they go through the expensive process of the site plan review? No, because the community outreach is going to cost them money, too. All right. Okay. I just, I I mean, just thought I'd mention Part it, of you know. the, the requirements for the host agreement is going to be... Well, I hope that the, the board, when they go to uh, discuss the host agreement, doesn't get or put too much weight on the fact that hey, you know, I've already spent all this money trying to do this, and the planning board said so that should not has be a no, consideration has no at all. bearing. No. Okay. Has no yeah. bearing. All right. Okay. All right. All right. I guess we're done then. I'll right. take a motion for adjournment. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice evening. Well, um, are you planning to meet next week? Um, no, no, I don't think so. Two weeks. We don't have Two anything. Weeks. I don't either. have anything. Because if we don't have anything for okay. the agenda, next meeting. Our next meeting is the 16th. 16th.